This is a test for the UNCB Braves football broadcast. We'll be coming onto the air for real at about 1.45 p.m. Eastern Time. Cameron Songer and Joe Vasile here with you. And Joe, uh, I'm liking the uh, the uniform matchup here as these teams take the field to warm up. Now it's great to see the black and gold taking on the black and golds here today. The West Virginia State uniforms are basically a mirror image of what the Braves wear on the road. Uh, black helmets, white jerseys with mostly black numbers, and we'll talk a little bit more about, about this later, and then black pants as well. The Braves going mono black, of course. And once again, we are testing the Braves broadcast system. This is Cameron Song with Joe Basile. This is just a test. We will start the actual broadcast at about 1.45 p.m. Eastern Time. Halloween football action. The UNCP Braves taking on the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets in the only non-conference game the Yellow Jackets will play all season. That's kind of an interesting fact. It certainly is, but they play in the Mid-East Conference. Something like that. Mountain East. Uh, Mountain I'm, East. I know. I've, I've got it written down. And hopefully nobody's actually watching this part. But it's a, it's a conference that has 10 teams. See, still not seeing any levels here. Yeah. Um, I know. I know. In general, when we're talking, I mean, we have to keep our eye on this. Barely seeing levels. Okay. Yeah, but now I'm putting back down. Yeah. Just on minus twelve. Uh, how's everything sounding over there? You hear the helicopter noise? How about now? Okay. Wait, what if? Oh, didn't we? Hang on. If I put it on line instead of mic, was that what it was? Uh, I don't let's, know. let's wait for a second and see if that... Okay. So I turned it down. down. Oh, turn turned that down. Okay. Okay, how's, how's it sounding now? I can suddenly hear... Okay, well, actually, I'm this hearing is good. it in my ear now. I think that was because it was so loud next to Joe's microphone. Maybe. Um, okay. Hold on. It, let's... Which mixer out there? There's, this is. Okay. 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 Well.
Yep. Yeah, but that would just be my headset. That, that's the noise that it's picking up. Yeah, the only thing going into there right now is me speaking and anything else that it's picking up from in here. So... All right, yeah, so there it is.
Uh, it's it needs to be three that we're turning up. And I'm not going to hear anything. This is, hold on, hold on. It's because this needs to go into the bullet. Oh, yeah. And then go in as a regular input. There it is. Well, we just rigged that thing up pretty nicely, didn't we? You just got to... And then so that's, that'll that's, control, that's controlling... That'll control what's coming from here, going yep. back in here. Yep. This, these don't matter for us right now. Yeah. And it is, I am in one, and, and I'm you two. are in two. Is it work? Everyone's happy. Holy shit. You just... I don't know how we did that, but...
Happy Halloween and welcome to Grace P. Johnson Stadium in Pembroke, North Carolina, where today the UNCP Braves host the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. With Joe Vasile, I'm Cameron Songer. Should be a really exciting game, Joe. Two offenses that know how to find the end zone. Yeah, and looking at the first couple of games of the season for UNC Pembroke, you wouldn't have thought that we'd be saying that at this point. But last week and even a little bit the week before at North Alabama, the defense has not been as good, but it's been the offense that has been taking center stage. And last week it was Patrick O'Brien and B.J. Bunn leading the way. Yeah, B.J. Bunn with a record-breaking day. Uh, just huge for him. 12 receptions, 219 yards, and two touchdowns. The receptions and yards, uh, both UNCP Braves records. And that, that's good news for the Braves. They're getting the passing game going. Rontonio Stanley's had his fair share of monumental days on the ground. He comes into the game with 70 carries for 422 yards and five rushing touchdowns. But those touchdowns have kind of tended to come in bunches. Yeah, and last week, after two really good weeks in a row from Stanley, he was largely shut down by Catawba. They did a good job of containing him. He had just 17 yards rushing in the entire game, but 15 of those yards were on his first carry of the day. He got two yards on his next nine carries. That's not going to get the job done, obviously, last week, and it probably won't help the Braves out very much this week going up against West Virginia State. And Bronhonio Stanley does have that game against North Alabama two weeks ago under his belt. Uh, he had three touchdowns in the game against Tuskegee, and then in the game against North Alabama, 148 yards on the ground, including one 84-yard touchdown run. It'll help your yards per carry average when you get 84-yard touches. Uh, I don't know how we're going to see that today. This is a, a West Virginia State team. We said they score a lot of points. They also allow a lot of points. They're averaging 34 points per game on offense, but they give up 33.8. So on average, it should be a fairly close game. But the Braves have also played a handful of games recently that haven't been particularly close. They've been on a little bit of a slide. Yeah, you look at some of the defensive numbers for West Virginia State, allowing nearly 140 yards on the ground, over 260 yards through the air. They're averaging, giving up opponents over 400 yards of total offense per game. That's something that when you look at, especially what Patrick O'Brien was able to do against Catawba last week, who had been traditionally a very good passing defense up until then, almost 400 yards through the air for O'Brien. You look at that as something that you can keep that momentum going and try to exploit and run up some points. It's going to be tough to contain the Yellow Jackets offense, but Code Black has shown at times this season that they can get a very good pass rush and perhaps disrupt a few things there. Yeah, the, the defense, I mean, going back to this point for the Braves' defense, their first three games in terms of points allowed in three straight wins, a 17-7 win over Winston-Salem State, 14-10 over Fayetteville State, and 16-6 over Shaw, then they went on the road, leaving the state of North Carolina for the first time, got be uh, beat around a little bit by the North Greenville Crusaders, 40-17, to came back to Pembroke for a homecoming game against Tuskegee, 29-17 win. The Braves are undefeated on Lumbee Guarantee Bank Field so far this season. And hit the road again, taking on the number 17 North Alabama Lions, 62-28. Uh, that, and that's a score that is, is a little misleading. North Alabama is a very, very good football team, and it really ends up hurting the Braves' stats a little bit. Uh, 62 points a lot. And then, like you mentioned last week, 39-21 on the road at Catawba. What have you noticed about this defense that's different than the way they started the season? Well, it just seems like the pass rush that was so present at the beginning of the season, especially you think back to that opening night against Winston-Salem State when they had seven sacks, including three for Mike Keck, it has been totally absent last week and the week before against North Alabama. The offensive lines, just as they've been able to Get better scouting reports on the front seven for Code Black has been able to contain things starting with Mike Keck and then affecting the rest of the line as well. Mike Keck through the first five games of a 10-game season had nine sacks, which broke a school record. Since then, in the last two games for the Braves, no sacks by anybody on the entire defense. Pressure on the quarterback is going to be key as we kind of transition from talking about when the Braves have the ball, now talking about when West Virginia State has the ball, talking about the Braves defense. Uh, uh, some slight changes, especially in the defensive backfield. We'll get to the starting lineups a little bit later on. Albert Wright will be getting the start at one of the outside linebacker positions. But the front four, largely the same, and the onus is going to be on them to get pressure on the quarterback, like you said. Yeah, it's going to be on Mike Keck, but also on the other side, Tyler Hinton as well was getting a lot of pressure in the first couple of games. He had a big sack right at the end of the Fayetteville State game, which pretty much wrapped up the victory there. Since then, though, he's 
been qu very quiet, just 18 tackles total on the season. They need to be getting a little bit more pressure from the other side so that lines can't just key on Keck to shut him down. You have to be able to come in and get pressure from all around. The pass rush is going to be particularly important for the Braves today because West Virginia State, well, they like to throw the ball all over the field. Not a huge rushing game for them, especially with their starting running back Tyrone Barber out. He's leading the team with nine rushing touchdowns. He's a freshman from New York. A big loss for them. However, they do get back Quinton Gray, a wide receiver who's put up some ridiculous numbers to this point this season. Yeah, he's missed two games this season. Still leads the team with 46 catches for 708 yards, which is nearly three times what the second place guy on the team has. It's just very explosive, averaging 118 yards per game in receiving, and he's going to be the guy to key on on defense for the secondary of the Braves. It's just, it's gray, and then it's kind of spread out after that to Akil Washington, Tyrell Henderson, a couple other guys, but gray is the number one target for Matt Kinnick. Yeah, Matt Kinnick, the quarterback, he certainly had the opportunity to throw the ball all over the field this season, racking up over 2,200 yards passing in the Yellow Jackets' first eight games. They're 5-3 and three on the season, Braves 4-3. and three. Kinnick, a sophomore from Ohio, he's thrown for the 2,200 yards, 16 touchdowns versus six interceptions. Good numbers, but the, the other number that kind of jumps out is surprising, S under 60% completion rate. For a guy who throws the ball as much as he does, he really doesn't complete a lot of passes. Yeah, almost 300 passing attempts in the first eight games of this season. When you're under 60%, that's never someplace that you want to be. You, you'd like to be 62, 63, 64 at a minimum. But to be that low when you're passing the ball that much, it gives you a little bit of an opportunity as a defense to maybe be able to force a couple of com incompletions in a row and put a stop to whatever momentum that the Yellow Jackets are building th at that particular time. But from Kinnick's side of things, you just have to complete the ball, move the chains, and keep it going because that's just not very good. Take a look at the coaching matchup in this one. John Anderson is in his third season at the helm of the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets program. He brings in a career record of 7-22. and 22. A big turnaround year for the Yellow Jackets after a season where they really struggled last year. They went 2-9, and 1-9 one and nine record in the conference. They play in the Mountain East Conference, and they get one non-conference game a year. This is it for them this year. They're right back to action in the Mountain East Conference after this game. On the other side, the Braves, another turnaround story, a 2-8 and eight season in the inaugural campaign by Shane Richardson. He's now in his second season as the head coach of the UNCP Braves. UNCP started the season 4-1. and one. It was a very promising, good start for the black and gold. Two straight losses by double figures. This is a really important game for the UNCP Braves this afternoon. And I think that it helps that they're coming back home, where, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, they are undefeated this year. They seem to feed off of the crowd here at Lumbee Garrett T Bank Field so much more than when they're on the road. You like that if you need to have a statement game like the Braves need to have today, that you're going to be able to do it here at home in front of your fans. One of the key numbers to watch out for today, the Braves averaging just a hair over 20 points per game on offense. That needs to go up because West Virginia State allows more than 30 points per game. If the Braves are able to take advantage against a Yellow Jackets defense that's really struggled at times this year, this could turn into a really high-scoring, fun affair, and who knows, it could be the team that gets the ball last, could win this one. Uh, it's, it's, I'm really looking forward to what should be a fun game. And look for one more key. It's on the defensive side of things for West Virginia State, something we didn't talk about, 13 interceptions as a team this year. Patrick O'Brien has been prone to some interceptions this year, so he's going to need to be crisp with his passes like he was last week. Teams getting ready to take the field in just a few minutes, still about 10 and a half minutes on the clock. And we will step aside for the national anthem here. Be right back from Pembroke.
Lumbee Guarantee Bank Field at Grace P. Johnson Stadium on the campus of UNC Pembroke. The Braves getting ready to take on the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. With Joe Vasil, I'm Cameron Songer. A beautiful day for some college football. Temperature hovering around 70 degrees, partly cloudy skies. It certainly doesn't feel like tomorrow morning we'll wake up and it will be November. No, and also it'll be an hour earlier or later earlier, or whatever earlier. it is. Turn the clocks back. That's you a good reminder. You do something with the clocks uh, overnight tonight. But either way, it doesn't feel like the last day in October, except for all the people dressed up in their Halloween costumes. A beautiful day, like you said, just about 70 degrees here at kickoff, and uh, a good one for some football. A, a very festive atmosphere as well in Pembroke. I, these fans, it's, it's been a while since the last home game. The homecoming game for UNC Pembroke was back on October 3rd. Seems like a long time ago, and it was a, it's, it was a very different point in the season for the Braves as they knocked off the number 17 uh, Tuskegee Golden Tigers at the time. Uh, since then, the Braves have been mostly down, back-to-back -back losses after a bye week, and this is an important uh, momentum builder for the rest of the season. Still two games to go after this one for the Braves. They'll be on the road at Kentucky Wesleyan next weekend before returning home for the season finale against Limestone. It's a similar story for West Virginia State. Two games left to go after this one, the first two weeks of November, and uh, playoffs for both teams might be out of the question at this point, uh, but about building that momentum and uh, trying to finish with just three losses like they have right now, both teams thinking about trying to finish the season perfect. Yeah, and, and that's really all you can ask for if you're outside of the playoff hunt. The only saving grace that maybe West Virginia State has is if something happens to Shepard, who's in their conference as well, maybe they could sneak in by winning the conference. But for UNCP, as an independent with the losses they've taken this year, it's, it's almost out of the question at this point for them to be in the playoffs, mostly because of the losses the last two weeks. You're just looking to finish strong and build that momentum going into the off season, so that next year you can come back and just take it one step further and get back into the playoff picture. Looking at who UNCP is starting on offense today, pretty much everybody should be uh, able to come back next season. Just one senior in the starting lineup. That's John Rich, the wide receiver. Also, Zelius Morrow, a tight end who sometimes is technically not in the starting line. He's listed as the starting tight end. Sometimes the Braves come out with four or five wide. Uh, and then on defense, the Braves, they will lose Mike Keck, who's a, a senior defensive end. Mentioned that he broke the school record for single season sacks already. Mike Lawrence at the defensive uh, a DB spot will also graduate. Uh, the five foot nine hundred seventy pound senior DB from Winston Salem. But a lot of guys for the Braves who aren't in their final year of eligibility, this could be the year that they look at as a big turning point in the UNCP football program in terms of building a, a, a new era under Shane Richardson and, and becoming a perennial power in the region. Yeah, because last year Shane Richardson kind of had a couple of key guys, including Patrick O'Brien, the quarterback, red shirt so that you'd get that extra year of eligibility. This year, now those guys are on the field. They're finding that chemistry with each other. They're learning everyone's tendencies, playing, and then next year is when you really start to gel and take it up to the next level. You've had a couple of years together, and then it's time to really elevate the program back to that national power where it was even just a couple short years ago, Cameron. Yeah, the Braves went to the playoffs just two years ago. A lot of, uh, just a big exodus. The coaching staff, mm -hmm. a ton of key seniors from that yep. 2013 team. And it showed last year with a 2-8 and eight result. Braves already doubled that win total. And they're in the tunnel right now getting ready to take the field. The intro music uh, playing, the, the video board lit up. The fans on their feet making some noise, getting ready to welcome their Braves onto the field. As, it's, as I think for some of these players, it kind of starts to sink in a little bit. After this game, there's one game left this season. Mm -hmm. Right here at home. That'll be, like we said, the last week of the season against Limestone and obviously senior day and, and getting those last few opportunities to play in front of your home crowd, especially for some of the more senior members of this team, to just cherish those memories going forward because you never know what life holds after football, but for almost all of these guys, these are the last couple of home games that you're going to have. Braves taking the field out of the Brave Hawk Tunnel, led by their head coach Shane Richardson. The captains were already out there. And what a fun moment this is for the Braves. The tunnel run with the smoke. And the Braves coming out with their black helmets, black uniforms with the white numbers, black pants, and a couple of players rocking the pink wristbands and sweatbands. Thought I saw some pink socks on somebody. Uh, slightly covered up by some mm -hmm. some ankle tape, but it is the uh, the last day of October, so the last day that that really kind of becomes. Uh, relevant and Braves this is just their second 
uh, home game in October. They played mostly on the road this month and had the one bye week. So getting in in the, uh, in the spirit of the breast cancer awareness in the month of October, that's nice to see for UNCP. West Virginia State now making their way out of the visitor's locker room. And that's always also fun to watch when the visiting team comes out onto the field because uh, they, they leave a walkway for the team so that the visiting team doesn't have to walk over the nice brand new track, Dick and Lenore uh, Taylor track at UNC Pembroke. And most visiting teams tend to just say, no, we're going to walk over your track if we feel like it. Uh, I've said it before that it was a little disrespectful. I will stand by that uh, because it... it if I was a facilities manager, I would certainly be very annoyed. Uh, I could, I, I've known a facilities manager or two in my time, and, and I could say that uh, you're, you're most likely right with that. Coin toss taking place at midfield. Patrick O'Brien, Mike Keck among the captains for the Braves. Kendall Jacobs is the other one, and John Rich. So four captains for the black and gold today. And they meet at midfield with the captains from West Virginia State. We're getting ready to do the coin toss on Halloween Day in Pembroke, North Carolina. The pregame clock has run down to zero. 15 minutes on the first quarter game clock, and we are moments away from getting started. And I have to say, a lot of the fans just looking around in the stands, getting into the Halloween spirit. Also, the cheerleaders for UNCP have seemingly gotten into the holiday spirit as well. Shirts and ties and blazers. I I'm not sure if that's a, a Harry Potter look or whether they're just... I don't know what they're dressed up as. I think they're the Blues Brothers. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm hoping that's what it is, and uh, it often that ties into a performance they will do at halftime. So uh, if you're watching on the, on the YouTube stream, definitely stick around for halftime, and we will keep the cameras pointed at midfield when the cheerleaders get ready to do their halftime routine. Braves won the coin toss, elect to defer. So they will start the second half with the ball, meaning West Virginia State will get the ball to start this game. The captain's trotting over to the sideline after a successful coin toss for the Braves. And they will be kicking off in terms of which way they're going across the screen. We, ha we will see. But a, just again, a gorgeous day for football. Sun kind of peeking through the clouds. In the end of autumn, was, uh, not really per football weather. I mean, you think of football weather, it's kind of chilly. You see your breath. Uh, this is just a nice day to be outside uh, and, and a, a good day to be playing. It's not too hot, not too cold. I'm sure the players really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. You don't see them with the big jackets on on the sidelines and all huddled around some kind of a space heater. Just everyone going out in their short sleeves and enjoying the day. Brave special teams will take the field. They will kick off as they go from left to right across your radio dial. Braves in the all black with the white numbers on their uniforms. The West Virginia State yellow jackets wearing black helmets, black pants, and white jerseys with numbers that are a combination black and gold. A very similar look to what the Braves wear when they're on the road. And uh, a lot of similarities between these teams in terms of uh, their overall records. Both teams with three losses that have, they've played tough schedules to this point. Both fairly young teams. And, uh, and then the color schemes as well. Black and gold against black and gold. Yeah, they really couldn't have picked two closer color schemes. I I'm pretty sure they're even the same Pantone colors as well. There's really not any difference between the gold of the Yellow Jackets and the gold of the Braves. Despite all the similarities, this is the first all-time matchup between the Braves and the Yellow Jackets. Matt Davis getting his special teams ready to go. Back deep to return for the Yellow Jackets. They have Joe Morris, Trevon Reese. You also see some Tim Kennedy out there. And Matt Davis to kick off, and here we go. Kickoff will be fielded at about the goal line, taken from maybe a yard deep, running along the right side. Some good blocking, no flag, and breaking through to about the 27-yard line. That's number 10, Joe Morris, picks up about 27 yards on the kick return. And decent starting field position for the Yellow Jackets, and leading his team out onto the field for the first time, it's Matt Kinnick. Hey, Yellow Jackets might have gotten away with a hold that time on Trey Hales, who was coming down the field. Looked like he was gotten around his man and was still grabbed, but... No flag was thrown, and I think rightfully so. Let the players play, and good starting field position for the Yellow Jackets. From the right hash, their own 27-yard line. Kinnick in a shotgun formation. He has three receivers to the left, one to the right, and a tailback to his left. It looks like Deonta Brown starting running back for the Yellow Jackets. Shotgun snap, play fake, sets up a screen, left side, complete, and pushed out of bounds about the 31-yard line. Not a lot there. 
as they threw to Trevon Reese. And a good block by Akil Washington, who was the wide receiver set up in the slot that time. He came up and made a good block to get Reese a little bit of room on the outside to pick up the couple of yards that he was able to get. Mike Lawrence coming in from across the field, or he's running back across the field now, the defensive back, as a kind of a no huddle look. Hurry up offense for West Virginia State. Second play from scrimmage, setting up a screen now on the right side, complete to Reese once again. He's tripped up and not a lot there. That was Albert Wright making the tackle. Yeah, and you mentioned the no huddle right before that. West Virginia State this year averaging 74 plays run per game. It's a pretty good pace right up there with some of Chip Kelly's Oregon teams from a few years ago. Third and four coming up for the Yellow Jackets. They're on their own 34. They need to get to the 38. Two receivers to each side for quarterback Kinnick. The offensive line in front of him, it's Nick Dreixler, Zach Alvidrez, Alex James, Dalton Shannon, and Chase Henderson. Play clock at 13. Two receivers on each side, and the running back Brown to the left of the quarterback, Kinnick. Play clock down to seven. Gets the snap off, drops back to pass. Braves bring pressure. Steps up, throws left side, complete, and it looks like it's going to be enough for a first down. It's pushed out of bounds near the 40-yard line. Once again, Trevon Reese making the catch. Well, he's been the go-to guy early, and, well, it doesn't look like anything fancy so far out of Kinnick. Just a couple of three- and five-step drops, quick passes to the outside, and he's completing him, which is really what he needs to do to try and get uh, some of his numbers up. The other receivers for West Virginia State, other than Reese, it's Akeel Washington on that left side. This time it's a handoff, left tackle, running over a defender and picking up about two or three yards is Deonta Brown. Yeah, it was Jonas Johnson, the cornerback, opposite Mike Lawrence who made the tackle that time. And, well, I don't know if he was the one who made the tackle or if Brown tackled him on that play. But either way, good hard running out of Deonta Brown. We also see out there for the Yellow Jackets, number 16, Akeel Washington, and number 81, Tyrell Henderson. No look right now from Quinton Gray, the star wide receiver for the Yellow Jackets. wonder if he's still a little banged up. Two receivers to each side, shotgun snap. Fakes the handoff to the right, lobs a pass over the middle, complete into Braves territory. More than enough for a first down, taken down to the 35-yard line, and slow to get up, Tyrell Henderson making the catch. And he, he's writhing on the ground right now. He appears to be in a lot of pain Looks like he's grabbing down at his right knee. Not sure if it bent awkwardly as he went down that time, but certainly not something good to see. A uh, big game there for the Yellow Jackets. We'll keep it here during the injury timeout as we reset the action so far. The Yellow Jackets, a uh, couple first downs. I converted once on third down. Now they have the ball on the Braves' 35-yard line. It's first and 10 with 12.49 to go. No score in the ball game. Didn't get a chance to introduce you to the Braves' starting defense, so here that is for you. We talked about Mike Keck a little bit in the pregame, the senior defensive end from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Joining him on the defensive line, Austin Locklear and Marquin Hill in the middle with Tyler Hinton, the redshirt freshman on the other defensive end spot. In the, on the linebacking core, it's Garrett Barnett and Albert Wright on the outside with Elijah Williams in the middle. Williams is a junior from Charlotte, and he leads the team with 46 tackles. The DB is for UNC Pembroke, Mike Lawrence and Matt Thomas Quick. Lawrence is a redshirt senior from Winston-Salem, Thomas Quick a junior from Atlanta. And then at the safety spot, Tyreek Holloway, redshirt junior from Lexington, North Carolina, and Josh Manns in the starting safety spot. He's a redshirt freshman from Durham. Offense back out on the field for the Yellow Jackets as the injured player Henderson is able to get uh, over to the sidelines, mostly under his own power it looked like, and that's good. And now... Uh, Bigger set for the Yellow Jackets. Just two receivers, one on each side, two tight ends, and a pistol formation for the quarterback, Kinnick. And he will just hand off up the middle. Great blocking and cutting it out towards the left side. Plenty of room. Enough for a first down, 15, and finally pushed down at the 13-yard line. Deonta Brown got to the second level before he was touched. Yeah, great job there by Brown with a couple of good cutbacks on that play. Originally, one when he just took it right up the middle, then cut it out to the left. Faked, then back towards the middle of the field and came back to the outside to pick up a few extra yards on a second cut as well. Just a good job of the blocking up front as well. Gain of 22 takes the Yellow Jackets into the red zone. First and 10 from the Braves' 13-yard line, 12-15 to go in the first quarter. Two receivers, one on each side once again. They'll stay in the same formation. Handoff up the middle to Brown, right tackle. Plenty of room. He's lowering the shoulder. He's inside the five, down towards the goal line. It's a first down, but they will keep him out of the end zone. Ball might have come loose at the end. Braves saying they have it although I think they will say he was down before the ball came out. So a first down run, a gain of 12 for Deonta Brown. He will stay in the game. Braves now facing first and goal for the Yellow Jackets. They have three yards to go. Huddling up are the Yellow Jackets. 
They will take their time. Brown stays in the game. I think Kinnick will go under center here. Notes again, a pistol formation, and they are loading up the left side. Two tight ends and a fullback in the formation. One wide receiver, and Brown in the pistol. They hand off to Brown once again. He is tripped up and short of the end zone. A nice tackle there by Kelvin Brim. Grabbed him by the shoestrings. Gain of two for Brown. Let's see if the Yellow Jackets don't try to go to the air here. They've been really grounding, ground and pound offense uh, here once they get into Braves territory. And I don't think the Braves were expecting that. So Brown goes to the sideline. Now in to run the ball is Kelvin Barrett. Will they go to him? We'll see. Kinnick in the pistol. One receiver to the right and a jumbo formation for the Yellow Jackets. Handoff straight up the middle. Good surge and into the end zone for a touchdown. Kelvin Barrett punches it in and the Yellow Jackets take the 6-0 lead. 11.06 to play first quarter. Sixth rushing touchdown of the season for Kelvin Barrett on what is his 70th carry. Pretty good job there, but you mentioned that they're not much of a running team, but when they get down towards the goal line, that is something that the Yellow Jackets have done a lot this season. S now 18 rushing touchdowns and 18 passing touchdowns for this offense. On to attempt the extra point is number 97, Anthony Herrera, the junior from San Diego, California. The snap is down, the kick is up, and it is good. And with 11.06 remaining in the first quarter, the opening possession of the ball game goes exactly the way the Yellow Jackets wanted. They punch it in for a touchdown. We'll be right back. Braves trailing early in this one. You're listening to UNCP Braves football. Opening possession of the game, nine plays, 72 yards, and a touchdown, the result for the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets back here in Pembroke. Joe Vasile, Cameron Songer here with you on the Braves radio network as the Braves will get the ball for their first possession of this game. Back deep to return, JoJo Span and number 31 for UNCP, Rontonio Stanley. Haven't seen him much in a kick returning role. And after nailing the extra point, Anthony Herrera will kick off. Waiting for the football to be delivered. A little, a little bit of a delay there. I think everyone took the field, and, and there was no football out yeah, there. Yeah, they forgot to bring out the K-ball, perhaps letting a couple of PSI out to get it to carry a little better. Who knows? Oh, are, are you insinuating something about uh, deflating footballs? Me, never. <laughs> <laughs> Herrera will kick off. Braves will return and get their first possession of the game as they try to go from left to right across the field. A uh, little bit of a delay once again as the Yellow Jackets had some trouble lining up. Now Herrera will kick it off, and here we go once again. And going back into the end zone, letting it bounce is JoJo Span, and that will be a touchback. Haven't seen much of that this season. Both teams, uh, both the Braves and their opponents in general, have really tried to return kicks mm -hmm. more often than not. I, I, I'm, a, I'm generally a fan of touchback, especially since the rule was changed to take it out to the 25 rather than the 20. Yeah, and, and it looked like Span might have misread that kick a little bit because he took a couple of steps in as if that was going to be a shorter kick before he retreated back over his head. I wonder if he judged it properly the first time, whether or not he would have tried to return if he could have gotten to the spot. Patrick O'Brien leads the black and gold offense out onto the field. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Pistol formation with Rontonio Stanley behind him. One tight end, Zelius Morrow. Lines up on the right side. They will hand off to Stanley as he tries to take it off right tackle. Cuts out towards the sidelines and has plenty of room. That's almost a first down. He gets about nine yards. We'll see where they spot him. Nice run there by Stanley. Yeah, beautiful cutback by Stanley that time as well, just like Brown did the first time that he carried the ball for West Virginia State. A fake towards the middle of the field. Cut to the outside to pick up a first down. 11-yard run by Rontonio Stanley. Braves go no huddle. Now two receivers to the left, one to the right. The man alone on the right side, B.J. Bunn, the Braves' top receiver. Hand off up the middle again. Now Stanley, and a big hole for him. He picks up seven or eight yards this time as the Yellow Jackets linebacking core finally brings him down. And on those two rushes now for Stanley, he has more yards than he had all last week. One of the guys to keep an eye out for for West Virginia State is their star linebacker, Dennis Gardeck. Usually wears number 47. We were told he will be wearing number 58 today. We'll keep an eye out for him. 
Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Once again, pistol formation for O'Brien. And they will hand off once again with Stanley. Pressure comes, and he is dragged down. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage there. He lost a yard or two as the Yellow Jackets brought the blitz from the right side. Yeah, it was the inside linebacker, Mitchell Roll, making the tackle that time behind the line of scrimmage. He and Gardeck are just right up the middle. They play a 3-4 defense. They're the two inside linebackers, and they're the two guys that are almost always there making the stop. Third and four coming up for UNCP from their own 42-yard line. They need to get it to about the 46-yard line. And the Braves keeping that same lineup out on the field. Two receivers to the right. B.J. Bonalone on the left side. Zelius Moro is the tight end. He's on the right. Shotgun formation for O'Brien with Stanley to his right. Play clock down to four. Gets the snap. Rolls the pocket to the right. Has time. Tucks it and runs. And he will get the first down. Maybe. He was close. We'll see where they spot the ball. Yeah, looks like the headlinesman is right at the 46-yard line, which was the line to gain. And they're going to give him the first down. It was very close, though. Well, O'Brien's body, I don't think, actually ever made mm -hmm. the line to gain, but the ball did, and that's yeah. what matters. He stretched the ball out as he was sliding down, and that's a very heads-up play by the redshirt junior quarterback. Patrick O'Brien gives the Braves a fresh set of downs. Ball on their own, 46. Nine minutes and 10 seconds to play in quarter number one with the Braves trailing 7 to nothing. Shotgun formation as he motion span across the line. Drops back to pass. Throws long right side. Complete with plenty of room to the 10-5. Touchdown Braves. John Rich to the house. Busted coverage there by the Yellow Jackets as he was wide open along the sidelines. And O'Brien drops it in. And that was a play that worked for the Braves a couple of times last week. And a couple of times they had open guys and O'Brien just overthrew him. So when he saw that he had Rich all alone, Beat his man on the right side, just floated a quick pass down the field for him, and Rich was able to get to the spot and get in untouched. B.J. Bunn stays on the field. He will hold for the Matt Davis extra point. This would tie the game. Snap is down, the kick is up, and it is straight through with 8.55 remaining in quarter number one. We predicted a shootout, and that's the way it's looked so far. 8.55 to go. We're tied up at 7. Don't go anywhere. More scoring coming up. You're listening to UNCP Braves football. Back to Pembroke with Joe Vasile. I'm Cameron Songer. Thank you so much for joining us on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon in late October. Halloween football between the UNCP Braves and the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. And Joe, it's been all about the offense. It certainly has. Each team has had the ball once. Each team has racked up over 75 yards of total offense and gotten into the end zone. And we're not even halfway through the first quarter yet. They've done it a little bit differently. The Yellow Jackets just kind of methodically drove down the field, had a couple of big plays. The Braves, on the other hand, on the strength of a 54-yard touchdown pass from Patrick O'Brien to John Rich. Rich's first touchdown of the season and O'Brien's 11th. The longest catch of the season for John Rich, just his 19th catch. His previous long was 24. I'd say he shattered that. A high kick by Davis. This will be caught at the 10-yard line by West Virginia State. Braves coverage already there. Breaking it now to the 30, 33-yard line. Ball might have come out at the end as there's a big pile and a good return there by Joe Morris. Yeah, Morris kind of was able to get a running start when he caught that one and was able to catch it in stride and get a few yards, but a very nice return after a short kick from Davis. Some score updates for you around UNCP Sports. Second half underway with the UNCP women's soccer team taking on Columbus State down 2-1. to one. And the Braves volleyball team on the road at Claflin picking up a three sets to one victory. A nice non-conference road win for the Lady Braves volleyball team. 7-7 the score here, 8.48 to go in the first quarter. And the Yellow Jackets offense back to work. Play action, throw over the middle, caught, what a play. And a diving catch, Brave defender trying to rip the ball from the hands of Trevon Reese. He hauls it in for the first down catch. Yeah, that was Kelvin Brim, the safety who came across that time and nearly ripped Reese's helmet right off as he was trying to get that. I'm surprised a flag wasn't thrown 
for a face mask penalty because it certainly looked like there might have been some of that grabbing going along just the way that Reese's head twisted back. I think he maybe was trying to sell it. I think Brim got his hands on the ball there as he was trying to just pick the ball up out of his hands for the interception. First down and 10 to go. Dropping back to pass. Looking deep over the middle. Kinnicky fires. It has a man caught. 20, 15, 10. Tripped up, but he will stay on his feet. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. Josh Keiko to the house. Yeah, the senior from Long Beach, California with his second touchdown of the season. He's been a big play guy as a 74-yard catch and now another big one there for another touchdown and well, the shootout is on. That wasn't 74 yards, but it was 60 mm. plus for Keiko. And another passing touchdown for Matt Kinnick, his 17th on the season. And it's now 13 to seven, extra point pending for the Yellow Jackets. On a kick once again, Anthony Herrera out of Madison High School in San Diego, California. It's been good on extra points. High snap, gets the down, it's blocked. Braves block the extra point attempt and drop it in the end zone. They're able to take it out a yard deep. They could have tried to return it for a defensive deuce. Instead, the Braves able to hold that possession to just six points. And that will send both teams to the sidelines. Another timeout on the field. We will take it as well. 8.18 to go in quarter number one. Yellow Jackets 13, Braves 7. <laughs> because it continues to be impressive. The touchdown pass by Matt Kinnick gives him 101 yards passing already in this game, and we haven't even played half of the first quarter yet. It has been an absolute offensive clinic, at least thus far, between the Braves and the Yellow Jackets, and really, we expected this one to be a shootout, and we're excited to see this one come on. Herrera on to kick once again for the Yellow Jackets. Back deep to return for the Braves. It's Rontonio Stanley and JoJo Span. First kick was a touchback, and then the Braves took the ensuing possession, 75 yards, the length of the field, and scored on a long touchdown pass to John Rich. Patrick O'Brien picked up his 11th touchdown pass of the season. So now both teams with a touchdown pass, and the Yellow Jackets, they've had two possessions. They rushed it in the first time, threw it in the second time. Braves now will see what they can do with their second possession. The extra point following that second touchdown was blocked, so the score 13-7 to with... Eight minutes and 18 seconds remaining. Taken from the one-yard line by Span. He runs towards the middle. Now tries to cut it back out. And he is wrapped up and taken down at the 14-yard line. He might have been better served just letting that bounce into the end zone. Braves will have a long way to go on this possession. He certainly will. But uh, with the way they were able to move the ball on that first drive, well, I can't really fault Span for wanting to try and take that one. You always like to see maybe you get some blocks sprung and you can break one loose. But, well, that time, like you said, might have been better served just letting it skip in and take it out to the 25. Both teams are perfect on third downs so far this game. I believe just one for one. So the defense is, it's not just they're struggling on third downs. They're struggling to even get to third downs. But we're still very early in this game. O'Brien in the pistol with two receivers to his right. He will throw to the right side. Caught by Span, trying to set up a screen. He is corralled out of bounds about the 18, 19 yard line. Trying to set up the block there was John Rich. But two defenders swarming to the ball. Call it a gain of about two. And it brings up second and eight for the Braves from their own 19-yard line. Eight minutes to go in quarter number one. Yellow Jackets leading 13-7. to seven. Neither defense has been able to get a stop yet. O'Brien looking to the sideline for the play call as they hold up those giant play cards along the sideline. Two receivers to his left, two to the right, with his tailback Stanley joining O'Brien in the pistol formation. Motion man. And the handoff goes up the middle to Stanley. He is tripped up and pushed back right at the 20-yard line. This brings up a third and long for the Braves. And on that play, the Braves brought in a couple of changes along the offensive line. Charles Holloway III, who's the backup center, was in there at center. And they also moved Jaden Funderburk, the left guard, over to right tackle, where he's played for a majority of this season. So a couple of changes in the running game. Uh, I don't know if that's the result of that, but certainly didn't help. Two receivers on each side for O'Brien. 
third and seven, dropping back to pass. He has time, looks over the middle, overthrows John Rich. It falls harmlessly to the turf, incomplete, and the Braves go three and out on their second possession. And just not a very good throw that time from O'Brien. Was trying to get it, like you said, to Rich over the middle, but just led him a little too far, and the pass was too high as well, and he's lucky that there wasn't a defensive back there awaiting that one to come down. Ball landed right at midfield, right on the Brave Head logo. And after the Braves gained 75 yards on their opening possession, most of them coming on a long throw to Rich. This time the Braves gained three yards on this possession, and they will call on Darius Williams to punt. Back deep to return is Wes, Wes Rush for the Yellow Jackets. The punt off, it's a high one, and it will be fair caught and made at the 42-yard line. Actually making that catch was Joe Morris, who was into return funds. A little bit difficult to make out some of the jersey numbers for West Virginia State. It's a, they have a gradient kind of pattern mm -hmm. on the numbers. It starts black at the top and ends up gold at the bottom. So you end up with some numbers looking more like some other numbers. A yeah. three can look like a two, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and, and the zeros and the eights oh, are, not, uh, are not oh, very different definitely. in terms of what they look like, especially when you get those changing colors down towards the bottom. Yellow Jackets have good starting field position, and they will hand off on the opening play. A gain of about four or five, and taken down is number 25, Kelvin Barrett. He had the rushing touchdown to cap the first touchdown drive. And he gets about five yards there, up to about the 47-yard line. Call it second and five for the Yellow Jackets as they approach midfield. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, and a tight end on the right for quarterback Matt Kinnick. He will fake the pass, roll the pocket to it. He is chased down. Mike Keck wraps him up, and that's a huge loss. Down at about the 31-yard line, Mike Keck picks up his 10th sack of the season. That was an absolutely dead duck play for Kinnick. As soon as he took that snap, he was under a ton of pressure, and he just kept running backwards for about 12 or 13 yards before Keck was able to catch him up and throw him down at the 34. So second and five goes straight backwards, and now this looks like about third and 20 for the Yellow Jackets. Three receivers to the left, one to the right, one running back, it's Kinnick in the shotgun. Six minutes to play, ball on their own 34, and they need to get it to the Braves 48-yard line. And with that sack, Mike Keck now two and a half sacks away from passing Devontae Bush for the all-time sack leader in Braves history. Throwing short right side, a lot of room to gain here for the running back. He's not even able to get back to the original line of scrimmage as they just threw short to Kelvin Barrett. A safe pass and a completion by Matt Kinnick. They'll bring up fourth and 12, and on comes the West Virginia State punting unit for the first time today. A good job by Matthew Thomas. Quick on the outside, keeping containment. Also, Albert Wright, the outside linebacker, got over and helped on the stop to bring him down before anything else can happen after the catch and a good stop by Code Black. They take the six point deficit and get the ball back in the hands of the offense. We'll see what they're able to do here. And a good job by the front four. I believe they might have rushed one more guy, but they got a lot of pressure on the quarterback with not a blitz call. And the punt is high and it will be fair caught. L nearly some contact there, but a nice job to maintain focus by the punt returner John Allen as he catches the ball at the 29 yard line and back comes the Braves offense out onto the field. Not a ton of time for O'Brien to talk with the offensive coordinator. That's Johnny Cox, the offensive coordinator slash QB coach for the UNCP Braves. And trying to just iron out what went wrong that last sequence and find what worked from the first uh, set of plays for the Braves when they were able to find the end zone on a long touchdown pass. O'Brien in the pistol. It's got two receivers to the right, one to the left. B.J. Bunn all alone on that left side. And Stanley behind O'Brien in the backfield. They will fake the handoff. Now roll the pocket to the left. Stepping up to throw. And complete to Bunn at the 45-yard line. He comes back to the ball. And the comeback makes the catch. First down, Braves. Yeah, just a good route run that time by Bunn to go exactly where he needed to go. 15 yards. Cut it back in and make the catch. Get a little bit afterwards as well up to the 45-yard line. That route was working all game last week. And it was working right there. Martin Munn was... A, he's a fullback who was playing tight end before. He comes out. Zellius Mora replaces him. Patrick O'Brien took a big hit after that play. The ref had to help him up, and the Braves come in. No huddle. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Linebacker showing blitz. Handoff goes right side to Stanley. He gets outside the hashes to the 45-40, and he's taken down just short of the 40-yard line. 14-yard run for Rontonio Stanley. First down, Braves. Yeah, that time West Virginia State rushed five, but they rushed heavy on the left side. The handoff went to the right side, and there was no one there to try and bring down Stanley. 
4.27 to play in quarter number one. Ball on the West Virginia State 40-yard line on the right hash. And the Braves come out with no running backs, five wide receivers, and Patrick O'Brien all alone in the backfield. Braves probably looking to pass here, if I had to guess. West Virginia State counters with a dime package. O'Brien in the shotgun, play clock down to 10. Showing blitz here. Showing blitz here are the Yellow Jackets, and it comes. O'Brien gets past one tackle. He heaves it deep, looking for a man, and it's caught by Bunn. Touchdown. Past two defenders. Are you kidding me? And not only that, but he was getting his jersey tugged on by the cornerback, Steven Gomez, and he was still able to create the separation to turn around and make that catch and get into the end zone. What a play by B.J. Bunn. Are you kidding me? Just throw the ball in his general vicinity, and good things often happen for the Braves offense. Eighth touchdown catch of the season for B.J. Bunn. That was really, really impressive. He stays on the field. He'll hold for the Matt Davis extra point, and because the Braves blocked the last extra point, this is for the lead. To make it 14-13, it's up, and it is good. And with 3.58 to go in quarter number one, the Braves take a one-point lead. It's 14-13 UNCP. You're listening to the Braves Radio Network. We'll be right back. Guarantee Bank Field at Grace P. Johnson Stadium, home of the UNCP Braves, who are undefeated on this very field in the 2015 season, looking to stay that way. Most of the first quarter in the books, four minutes still to play, and we could still see more scoring before the end of this quarter. It's just been fast, and it's been fun. Geez, we thought there'd be a shutout, but 27 points with still 11 minutes gone in this game. It, it's absolutely ferocious, the pace that these offenses have been putting points up on the board so far. And, well, kind of off the air, we set an over-under at 60 points for this game. Uh, I think it's going to be the over. Well, both defenses have made one stop, and each team has punted the ball once. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, boy, uh, it's, it's been a tough go. Long passes for both teams. As Matt Davis ready to kick this ball off, but the ball blew off the tee. A nice little breeze here in Pembroke, and with the temperature still hovering at about 70 degrees, it's just perfect weather to be outside. I mean, if you're in the area thinking about coming down, buy a ticket, come on out here and, and enjoy this game live, because uh, this is the way sports are meant to be enjoyed. Of course, we appreciate you watching on the stream or listening on the radio, but boy, if, you, if you're going to pick a Braves football game to go to, this, this would be a good one. Caught at the six-yard line by the return man for West Virginia State. He tries to take it along the right side. Nothing there for him. He gets it to about the 24, maybe the 25-yard line. And that's where the Yellow Jackets will take over first and 10. It was Joe Morris taking it that time for the Yellow Jackets. And now this becomes an important drive for Matt Kinnick and the Yellow Jackets offense. They're trailing for the first time in this game. Are they going to be able to have a statement drive here and regain the lead back that they've held since pretty much the outset? You know, they come out with three receivers on the left, one to the right. And again, and not including number 11, Quinton Gray. He missed the last two games with injuries. He's the team's leading receiver still. And we expected to see him back in this game, but I guess he was kind of a game time decision. Play action, throw goes over the middle and bobbled and dropped. Great defense there on the outside by the Braves defensive back, Mike Lawrence, as they were trying to connect with number 16, Akeel Washington. Yeah, Mike Lawrence has had just had a very nice season a couple of interceptions he's done good in making tackles as well and a great play in coverage that time to poke the ball out of the hands of Akeel Washington 349 to go in the first quarter Braves up 14 13 but the Yellow Jackets have the ball on their own 25 yard line play action looking to the right pass complete on the screen and tripped up at the line of scrimmage again one-on-one -on -one tackle this is Tyreek Holloway the safety coming up to make the stop and a good job there by Holloway coming up from the safety position in coverage on the slot man to make the tackle quickly set to step up with Kendall Jacobs being out the last two weeks and he's done a nice job of that third and ten for the Yellow Jackets now the run not really an option for them not that they've really done that much uh, except when they get close to the goal line two receivers on each side for Matt Kinnick he's in the shotgun drops back to pass Braves bring pressure can't get home lobs a pass over the middle complete but not enough for the first down as the one-on-one -on -one tackle made by Tyler Hinton the defensive end who dropped back 
Nice play call there by the Braves defensively. Code Black forces the three and out. Yeah, little uh, zone blitz that time as Hinton dropped back into coverage and was able to make the tackle. Good athletic play by the defensive end from Fuquay Verena. Gain of six. They needed ten, so that's not going to cut it. B.J. Bunn on to return this punt. Cole Patterson, for the second time for West Virginia State, will be punting. And he'll be punting with his heels on the, his own 16-yard line. The Braves can try to come after this. They can try to force a big play. But it looks like they'll take a, the conservative approach and try to set up for a turn. High punt, and B.J. Bunn will make the catch and then try to make something happen. He just scoots out of bounds at his own 29-yard line. He had to retreat to make that catch as Patterson unleashed a bomb. Yeah, it was a good punt by Patterson. Took Bunn all the way back to the 23-yard line, and then he had to reverse course and take it upfield. Was able to get something out of nothing there and pick up a couple extra yards. For Bunn, he averages... 15 and a half yards per punt return. His longest is 44 yards, but he's not used to having to return punts that are that much further over his head and that deep. And uh, great cover, or great coverage there by West Virginia State. A lot, of, a lot of credit goes to their special teams there to force the Braves to start. But the Braves do have the ball and the lead. First and 10 with two and a half minutes to play. Ball in their own 28. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Quick snap throw to Bunn along the right side, complete and out of bounds. It's trying to set up a little bubble screen. As he got maybe four yards. O'Brien up in that completion percentage once again. Yeah, O'Brien really the last two weeks has been very good in terms of completing passes, making the smart throws, something he wasn't doing a whole lot of earlier on in the season. He's been doing better and better at as the season has progressed. Shotgun formation for O'Brien with the running back Cliff Jones to his right. First time we've called Jones's name. Three receivers to the left, including B.J. Bunn. As the Yellow Jackets show pressure, now they back off. They'll rush just four. O'Brien has time. Throws left side complete near the first down marker. Where, where will they mark John Rich? We'll see. And it looks like they'll move the chains. First down, Braves. He needed about five. He got five and a half. Yeah, John Rich made the catch that time. Looked like he got tripped up either on a piece of turf or on, over his own feet as he just kind of fell down and did a face plant right after catching it. Might have been able to pick up a couple extra yards without that. The flip side of that, though, is he avoided taking a big mm -hmm. hit trying to come back over the middle. That's where the linebackers patrol, and you've got to watch out. Zelius Morrow checks in. He'll play tight end, lining up on the right side. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. O'Brien, again, sets up the screen. Right side to span, trying to cut it outside. Breaks one tackle and spun down at the 40-yard line. Just one yard there on the pass to JoJo Span. But another completion for Bun or for uh, O'Brien, excuse me. And with under 90 seconds remaining, clock continues to run. Yeah, O'Brien now seven, or rather, yeah, seven of eight passing the, in the game so far. And it seems like that bubble screen is going to be a big part, at least early, of the game plan for the Braves. Braves, I think they want to throw short and kind of lull the Yellow Jackets to sleep and then try to hit that deep ball. They've co completed two of them for two touchdowns for O'Brien. Now empty backfield, five receivers, three to the left, and a quick throw over the middle to Huff. And he is down just short of the first down marker, it looks like. Balled about the 48-yard line. Something up a third and short for the Braves. Under a minute to play in quarter number one. Jonathan Huff's had a quiet season, but had a catch last week. Comes up with one this week as well. Pretty good size wide receiver. Six Look for him to be involved a little more this year. Six foot one, 200 pounds, making his sixth catch of the season. And they will stop the clock here. I think they want to measure this and see if the Braves actually do need to try to convert on third down here. So they will bring out the chains. And based on where they have this ball spotted, I think they're probably at about an inch or two short. Looked like they needed to get it to the 49-yard line. Ball, the nose of the ball looks like it's just a tiny bit short of the chalk marker denoting the 49-yard line. But let's see where the chains are. Oh, it's close. And they just have it by maybe a lace or two on the end of that football. Yeah, they got it by the nose. And... It's one of those things that spotting the ball is such an inexact science that really it's hard to tell whether they picked it up or not actually, but based on where the spot of the ball was, it's a first down. So the Braves get first and 10 from their own 49. That saves them from having to try to convert on third and inches. And that can be big because oftentimes the defense will just key in on the run in that situation. You don't pick it up. Offenses will get too conservative. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. The tight end, Morrow. Pistol formation for O'Brien with Cliff Jones, the running back behind him. They will give it to Jones up the middle. He surges forward, picks up four yards, lowers the shoulder, and falls forward. A good job by Jones on his first carry in a couple of weeks here. Jones, 30 rushes on the season. Was used a lot early on in the season, but haven't seen too much of him over the last few weeks. 
Same could be said for Brian Staten and DeMonte Ram. It's really just been Stanley running the ball for the pretty much the entire month of October for the Braves. Braves will let the clock run down to zero. They have the ball in West Virginia State territory, and as the team switch sides of the field, they won't have to go very far. Ball spot on the 46-yard line. That's always appreciated, especially by the big guys. And that is the end of quarter number one. The score after 15 minutes, it's Braves 14, Yellow Jackets 13. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to UNCP Braves football. P. Johnson Stadium on the campus of UNC Pembroke, where the Braves hosting the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. And after one quarter, it's a 14-13 Braves lead. The blocked extra point has been the difference in this one, Joe. Joe Vasile, Cameron Songer here. And in between quarters, the UNCP men's cross-country team being honored at the stadium after winning the, fifth, the, the 2015 Peach Belt Conference Championship. First time in school history that's happened, and nice accomplishment for those boys. Yeah, it certainly was, and to get their names read in front of a nice crowd on hand here today, get some individual recognition, and of course also team recognition for what they were able to accomplish. Pistol formation for O'Brien to start the second quarter. Sets up a screen left side, complete to Bunn. He's got a little bit of room to work, cuts back, breaks one tackle across the 40 to about the 36-yard line, more than enough for a first down for the Braves. Boy, B.J. Bunn just so athletic on the outside there, made two guys miss before he finally hurtled to third and ended up going out of bounds. Just uh, able to keep that play alive and pick up the first down. Now actually mark him out at the 38-yard line of West Virginia State. First and 10 for the Braves nonetheless. And the Yellow Jackets defense, they've stopped the Braves once. It was one three and out and two touchdowns. That's been the result of the three Braves possessions to this point. Braves have the one-point lead and driving in. Two receivers to the right, one to the left for O'Brien. He has Munn, a fullback, in front of him. And they will hand off a kind of a misdirection. And no, it's actually kept by O'Brien. Boy, if he had just given to Cliff Jones, I think Jones would have broken free. But instead, Munn, the lead blocker for the quarterback keeper. And a gain of five for Patrick O'Brien. First quarter stats here for you. O'Brien, eight of nine in that first quarter for 133 yards and two touchdowns. His counterpart, Matt Kinnick, 9 of 10 for 115 yards and one touchdown. So an aerial assault for both teams, Joe. It certainly was. Also, you look at the total yardages of offense in that first half. UNCP 175 yards. Uh, West Virginia State 144 yards. Nearly 300 yards of total offense in the first half. Handoff goes up the middle to Jones. He's near the first time marker. Keeps his feet going and gets more than enough for the first down. Inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. First down, Braves. They're getting closer and closer to the end zone once again. And this time, they're not looking deep. They're kind of uh, nickel and diming their way down the field. A little dink and dunk, some, sh some runs, some short passes, rather than O'Brien, frankly, just heaving up a, a prayer, which is what, pa uh, what happened on the last touchdown by B.J. Bunn. Yeah, and that's already the 10th first down of this game for the Braves offense. We're in the second minute of the second quarter. Handoff, left side for Jones. He breaks one tackle. Keeps his feet moving down to the 20-yard line where he's taken down by a host of Yellow Jackets. We still haven't seen any penalties for either team in this game, Joe. A very clean game. And with both teams running that no huddle, you see guys get tired. Oftentimes, guys get called for holding, and this, the fatigue takes a, a factor. That's not been the case. Yeah, the Yellow Jackets this season are averaging over 90 yards in penalties per game. Their opponents, almost 120 yards in penalties per game. So clearly there's some cause and effect there, but it's been a very clean matchup so far. And... You know, knock on wood, it'll stay that way. God, what are they doing out there in the Mountain East Conference? That's wild. 
Two receivers, two receivers to the right, one to the left. O'Brien with the pitch play to Jones, trying to set up blocks on the outside. He cuts to the right corner and tries to turn the corner. He can't do it. He's near the first down marker, though, and I think they will give him the spot. First down, Braves, as he got it to the 15-yard line. Yep, looks like they're actually going to call him just inside that 15, so they can get that first down without getting into the end zone here, but another good rush for Cliff Jones as he's seeing an increased workload here on these last couple drives. A little slow to get up. One of the interior linemen for West Virginia State, actually it's the linebacker. It might be Mitch Rowell, who uh, was uh, a little slow to get up, but finally does return to action. Three receivers to the left. Shotgun formation for O'Brien. First and ten from inside the red zone. Play clock down to three. They will hand off up the middle for Jones. No, it's a keeper by O'Brien. He stretches out towards the right corner near the first down marker. And uh, we'll see where they spot him once again. A good run by O'Brien. That will move the chains. The marker was at the 14 or the four and a half yard line. He got to the four. So first and goal now for the Braves. And they will bring on a jumbo package. Just a Great methodical drive here. Patrick O'Brien's going to come off the field. Andrew Goodman, the quarterback, comes on, and he has not attempted a pass yet this season. He's been more of a runner, and I think the Braves will probably look for some kind of option play. DeMonte Rem also comes in to run. This is a designed package inside the five-yard line for the UNCP offense. First time they've been operating first and goal. Goodman in the shotgun, and they will go quarterback power right up the middle. He lowers the shoulder, and he is in. Touchdown, Braves. Andrew Goodman into the end zone. And with 11.42 to play in the second quarter, UNCP 20, West Virginia State 13, Andrew Goodman comes in and makes something happen. And what a great drive for the Braves offense. They took that one from inside their 20 and took it all the way down, just picking up chunks of yardage all the way and getting into the end zone. On to attempt the extra point. It's up and good by Matt Davis. He's been money on those extra points this season. 11.42 to play in the first half. Braves now have an eight-point lead. It's 21-13. Back in just a moment on the Braves Radio Network. The Braves offense continuing to steamroll the Yellow Jackets defense. Just one punt so far today by the Code Black offense. And three touchdowns scored. Andrew Goodman taking it to the house to cap a 12-play, 72-yard drive by the Black and Gold. And now it's a 21-13 lead for the Braves. Matt Davis on to kick as he'll be kicking off from his own 35. And two Yellow Jackets back deep to return. Looks like Joe Morris and number 20, Deonta Brown, will be the ones returning this kick for the Yellow Jackets. Gorgeous afternoon in Pembroke. 70 degrees at kickoff, a slight breeze. That's continued all afternoon. Just a perfect day for football to wrap up the month of October. A kick headed in towards the end zone. It will be taken out from two yards deep along the right sideline, cutting back towards the middle. Almost lost his winning, stays up across the 20 to the 25. He's broken containment, 35, 40, and finally taken down from behind. A great return by Joe Morris. He just stayed up and waited for holes to open up. Yeah, and Rondrick Bamberg was the backup linebacker in coverage that time, was able to make that last-ditch tackle up at the 42-yard line. Otherwise, that one might still be going. So the Braves able to force the Yellow Jackets offense to actually take the field here. And leading them back out onto the field is the quarterback, Matt Kinnick. Kelvin Barrett, the running back to his right. He's got two receivers to the left, one to the right, and a tight end in the formation on the left side. Handoff up the middle to Barrett on a delay. Spins past one, dives down to about the 50-yard line. Still a gain of about seven yards. This will bring up second down for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, Barrett put a good spin move on the safety. Tyreek Holloway that time was able to spin up towards midfield. A good pickup as now it's Barrett who's been doing the job mostly since it was Brown on that first drive. It's been all Barrett since. Same formation, two receivers and a tight end to the left. Handoff goes once again to Barrett into the middle of the line, and he is stuffed. 
taken down by Marquin Hill right in the middle of the line. Khalil Vance also in there at the bottom of that pile as well. It's actually Austin Locklear making the tackle, the other starting defensive tackle for the Braves. Hill out there with Locklear and Khalil Vance on the end. No Mike Keck here on this third down situation. Third and three for the Yellow Jackets. They have running backs on either side of the quarterback, Matt Kinnick, and a receiver on both sides as well. Faking the handoff, quarterback keeper up the middle. He dives forward, and did he get the first down marker? It's close. It's really close. Running back Barrett, who was uh, the fake as he leaked out of the backfield, signaling that they got it. Officials blowing the clock dead, and I think they will come out and measure. A nope. big moment in this game. This would bring up fourth and short if they don't get it. It would be fourth and short in Braves territory with the Yellow Jackets, a very good offense, down by eight points. I don't think they can even think about punting this regardless. I think the offense stays out on the field. Oh, no, I'd be inclined to go with it if you don't get it because even if the Yellow Jackets don't have the first down, it's by two or three inches. It is that close, although we're getting a look at it now as they bring the chains out, and it looks like by the nose of the football they might have it, but... Let's see. Oh, boy, they're just an inch or two short. Fourth down coming up for the Yellow Jackets and a decision for head coach John Anderson. And I, like we said, I don't think it's much of a decision. Offense stays out on the field. They look over to the sidelines for the signal. After that QB keeper by Matt Kinnick on third and three, picked up almost all three yards. As they respot the ball, fourth and inches. The Braves defense trying to make the stop, force the turnover, and give the ball Back to the Braves' offense with pretty good field position. Jumbo set on the field, a fullback and a tight end in the formation. No, I'm sorry, no need to get cute here. Just put Kinnick under center and have him fall forward for a couple inches. He's a big guy, six foot, 195 pounds. You also have backup quarterback Devon Dorsey, 6'3", 240. He, I would put him in and have him try to lower the shoulder, but that's just me. 10, 12 to go. Fourth down from near midfield for the Yellow Jackets. And now they're bringing out the punting unit quickly, trying the quick substitution. Braves not able to get anybody back to return the punt. And the play clock at 6-5. No one to return this punt for the Braves. It's a fake. They snap it to one of the up men. He dives forward and gets the first down. Wow, what a play there by the Yellow Jackets. They were able to make the substitution and still get the first down. That was one of the most complex and unnecessarily complex fakes I think I've ever seen. You put the regular offense out like you're going to go for it. You bring the punting unit on like you're going to punt, and then you run a fake punt. It worked, but why not just keep the offense on if you're going to go for it? Or if you're going to fake a punt, actually fake the punt. That's so frustrating for the Braves' defense as the Yellow Jackets' offense returns to the field. First and 10 from the Braves' 46-yard line with nine and a half minutes to play. Play fake, stepping up in the pocket, throwing over the middle, and a diving attempt for the catch. Did he make it? No, he didn't. Incomplete. A diving attempt for the catch by Tyrell Henderson as Matt Kinnick laid that ball in right where the defender couldn't get it. Unfortunately, his receiver couldn't get it either. And Henderson pleading with the officials to call that one a catch. But I don't think it would have mattered anyway because there is a penalty flag down and it's going against West Virginia State. That's going to back him up. First penalty of the game. It's a holding call. And that backs them up 10 yards. It does give them first down back, but I'm sure they'd rather try second and 10 rather than first and 20. That backs them back into their own territory to their own 44-yard line rather than the Braves' 46. For, er, first and 20 and a shotgun formation for Matt Kinnick. Two receivers to his left, two to his right as the Yellow Jackets try to drive the ball from left to right across the field. Gets the snap, drops back to pass, setting up a running back screen. Jukes one, jukes a second, and gets about two or three yards. A nice move by Kelvin Barrett to avoid that initial contact, but there was not a lot of room there for him to work. And a good job by Elijah Williams, sticking with him after that initial cut and bring him down for gain of a couple, but a play nearly blown up in the backfield. Nine minutes, for a good play by Barrett. Nine minutes to play in the first half. Braves up 21-13. Yellow Jackets have the ball on their own 47-yard line, second and 17 from the left hash. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Shotgun snap, pressure comes, throw over the middle, complete to the 50-yard line, dragging a defender and taken down is number 10, Joe Morris. He makes the catch, and he dragged Matt Thomas quick with him for two or three yards. Yeah, one number 10 dragging another down. They got back to about the original line of scrimmage just inside of it, so still a third and long, but much more manageable than it could have been. 
Third and nine from inside Braves territory. Shotgun formation as the Yellow Jackets go no huddle. West Virginia State really wants this conversion from the Braves' 45-yard line. Code Black really wants the stop. Two receivers on each side for Kinnick and a running back to his left. Braves showing pressure from the outside linebacker spots. Now they back off it. Shotgun snap, dropping back to pass, looking left, throwing deep, and that is left and intercepted by the Braves, taking it across the 40, still on his feet to the 50, stretching it back out across the field, down to the 30, 25, he's still going, and finally pushed out at the 20-yard line. Jonas Johnson with the pick. His first interception of the season, no flag on the play, and a huge interception in return. Braves offense comes out, and they're already in the red zone. And Matt Kinnick had a huge advantage in the slot on the left side. He had Trevon Reese, who was uncovered initially because Carlos Manning, the outside linebacker, was faking a blitz. And then Manning had to go back and try and cover Reese. He had Reese all alone with nobody anywhere near him. Ended up trying to go on the outside for the flanker and just overthrew him right in the hands of an on-waiting Jonas Johnson. So the Braves have an opportunity to make this a two-possession game. 7.57 to play in the first half. Braves up 21-13. And still out there at quarterback is Andrew Goodman. And he has a, a, a pretty pass. Uh, it looks like it's a pass formation. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. And he will fake the pass to the left and keep it himself. Off right tackle. Lowers the shoulder. First down run for Goodman as he takes it inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. A good burst of speed that time from Goodman. He had Devontae Rem out there almost serving as a lead blocker. And now he'll come off. Patrick O'Brien will come back on. On first and goal from the nine. Gain of 11 on the run by Andrew Goodman, who picked up his first career touchdown on the last offensive sequence for the Braves. Now Zellius Moore, the tight end, comes in. He'll be on the left side. Play clock still at 15, but O'Brien looking to the sidelines for the signal. Two receivers to the left. B.J. Bunn alone on the right side with Rontonio Stanley in the backfield with O'Brien. Gets the snap, pitches left side to Stanley. He's trying to set up blockers along the left side. Stays on his feet, stumbles down inside the five to the three yard line. He was nearly brought down by the shoestrings, but falls forward, got the extra step, and that makes it second and goal from the two and a half yard line. And the Braves offense is just getting anything they want. Over 240 yards so far. They had 419 yards last week, the last two weeks. The Braves offense has looked right on point. JoJo Span walks a little gingerly over to the sideline. Martin Munn, the fullback, comes in to replace him. Two receivers to the left, a tight end, and a fullback in this formation. O'Brien goes under center, and now we'll back up to the pistol formation. Stanley behind him, Munn to the right. Five on the play clock, gets the snap, handoff up the middle to Stanley, tries to take it off right tackle, and he is in, standing up. Touchdown, Braves make it 20 Seven, 13 UNCP, extra point pending. Braves looking to pull away here towards the end of the first half. Yeah, now that's the sixth touchdown of the year for Rontonio Stanley. The defense has looked great. The offense just can't stop scoring in this first half, and things are going real well for the Braves right now. Coming off back-to-back -back road losses, UNCP trying to avenge some of that, exercise some demons. Matt Davis nails the extra point. And with six minutes and 38 seconds to play in half number one, the Braves have really started to open this one up. It's 28-13. The Braves have the last three touchdowns in the game. We'll be right back. You're watching UNCP Braves football. Halloween has not been spooky at all for the Braves. They have been really, really good, and it's kind of been a nightmare so far since that opening possession for the Yellow Jackets. 28-13, the Braves lead. Joe Vasile, Cameron Songer here with you with six and a half minutes to play in the first half. And, Joe, we kind of predicted an offensive shootout in this one, but uh, the Braves, it's been, it's been all good for them. Yeah, the first quarter, it was 14-13 in favor of the Braves. Now they've scored the last, well, 21 points unanswered from the Yellow Jackets. And, you know, we were talking earlier this week and talking about all of the offense coming into this matchup, and you said something where it was, well, if it's going to be offense versus offense, 
you like the Braves' defense, and they've showed why so far today. They've got the ability to come up and make the stops when they need to, come away with a turnover, which led to those last points, and now sitting pretty with a 15-point lead, though still plenty of football left to go. First multiple-possession lead for either team. Braves blocked an extra point earlier, which is why it was an eight-point game earlier. That made it... It would have made it 14-7, said it was 13-7. Braves come back down, and since it was 13-7, it's been all Braves. Short kick by Davis, fielded at the five-yard line by Joe Morris. He tries to cut it towards the left side, now trying to cut back towards the middle. Braves keep their containment. Flag comes in in the middle of the field. Short of the 25-yard line is Morris. We'll have to see what the flag is for. Yeah, it, the flag was thrown kind of towards the back, but now they pick it up and actually put it down at the 21. Might be in the vicinity of a hold, but obviously we'll check and See what the officials end up calling. This could be huge for the Yellow Jackets as uh, really nothing has gone right for them in the second quarter. The interception and long return by the Braves defensive back Jonas Johnson. That is indeed a holding call. And it will be roughly half the distance to the goal line. It's actually outside the 20, so it's 10 yards. And uh, that starts the Yellow Jackets inside their own 15 to start this drive. Not ideal for a team that suddenly can't seem to move the ball against Code Black. First and 10, two receivers on each side, shotgun formation for quarterback Matt Kinnick, the sophomore from Ohio. He's thrown for over 2,200 yards coming into today's game, and this was just his seventh interception on that last sequence. He will hand off left tackle and nothing there for Kelvith Baird. He barely got back to the line if he did at all. Give him the line of scrimmage there. I'm, I'm a little surprised that they even gave him uh, zero yards. I thought he lost a yard. Mike Keck was all over him, just wrapped him up. So second and 10 from their own 11-yard line. Six minutes to play. Shotgun snap. Handoff goes up the middle once again. A little bit more room to work this time for Barrett as the he keeps his legs turning. That just allows more Braves to come in and wallop him. Tyreek Holloway coming in to finish off the tackle. A gain of two. There's just not a lot there for West Virginia State on the run. They're going to need to try to pass here. Third and eight from their own 13. They're going to risk punting from inside their own end zone on this possession. Three receivers to the right, one to the left, and the quarterback, Kinnick, in a shotgun formation. Braves going to rush six as they bring pressure. The pass tipped at the line and batted down incomplete. Great job. I think that was Mike Keck who got his hands up. No, Keck was on the other side. So that was Tyler Hinton. And just a great play that time to go up and swat that one down out of the air like he was a basketball center, just blocking his shot. Not today for Matt Kinnick. That was number 50, actually, Tajai Lyles, the freshman from Charlotte, who comes in on some of those third down situations as an extra pass rusher for UNCP, kind of a pass rush specialist. And fourth and eight from their own 13, 5.27 to go. B.J. Bunn back to return. He's standing right near midfield. Low snap, and the punt finally handled by Cole Patterson. It's a low one. Braves going to let it bounce as it rolls out of bounds. Short of the 50-yard line, about the 44. Braves will get excellent starting field position once again. Last possession, it was because of an interception returned inside the red zone. This time, the Braves force a three and out, and a punt that wasn't particularly great. Code, or Code Black did their job two times in a row. Now the offense can really look to create separation on this possession. Yeah, if the Braves are able to take it in for another score here before the half and then get the ball back to start the second half, this one could be put to bed and, well, in short order. Empty backfield as Patrick O'Brien comes out with three receivers to the left, two to the right. Let's see if the Braves throw it deep here. Yellow Jackets showing pressure. Just four DBs out there. Linebackers all lined up along the line of scrimmage. Actually, two DBs on either side. And one safety back. A lot of people up along the line of scrimmage defensively for the Yellow Jackets. Now motion man into the backfield. Rick Mack joins O'Brien. And they will hand off to Mack. No, it's a QB keeper on the option. Falling forward is O'Brien. He picks up three yards on the read option. 5-11 to go in half number one. The Braves have 21 unanswered, trying to keep that rolling. They're up 28-13 over the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. With Joe Vasil, I'm Cameron Songer on the Braves Radio Network. 70 degrees, partly cloudy skies in Pembroke, North Carolina. Uh, no chance of rain in this one. That's nice, considering the last time we were here at Grace P. Johnson Stadium, it was pouring for homecoming against Tuskegee. Braves 3-0 at home so far this year and look to be in pretty good shape to keep that record going. 
Two receivers to the left, one to the right, a fullback, Martin Munn, in the backfield with O'Brien in the pistol formation. Play clock down to four. They need to get this playoff. Two, one. He finally does get the snap. Handoff goes up the middle to Jones. He bounces it off right side, spins away from one, still on his feet inside the 40, down near the 35. He'll be just short of the 35, brings up third and short for UNCP. And just good tenacious running that time from Cliff Jones, refusing to let one man tackle him, just trying with all of his strength to spin off of tackles, to keep his legs moving, to gain a couple of extra yards, and now bring up third and two. This might be four down territory for the Braves, as Matt Davis, the Braves kicker, his long is just 36, so a little bit outside of his range, the ball on the 36-yard line. And the Braves need two yards. They need to get to the 34, under four minutes to play in the half. Two receivers to the left, none to the right. Fullback and a tight end on the right side with Cliff Jones behind O'Brien. Handoff up the middle. Not a lot there. I think that's probably a yard short there for Cliff Jones. And we'll see if they even look to the chains to mark it. No, officials putting the fist up. That's fourth down and one coming up for UNCP's offense. And really no hesitation. The offense stays on the field. They will huddle up. Let's, like see if, let's see if they maybe try a hard count and try to draw the defense off sides. Braves and Yellow Jackets, both with all three timeouts still. And they break the huddle. Pistol formation. Three receivers bunched up to the right. Yellow Jackets kind of scrambled. They will set up a quick screen to Bunn. He is brought down short of the line. Loss of about four on the pass by B.J. Bunn. They sniffed it out. And they went to the bubble screen once again. That's been their go-to play on offense for a majority of this first half. And that time, the Yellow Jackets were finally able to contain it for a loss of a couple of yards. Turnover on downs for the Braves, but like you were saying, it's kind of that no man's land where you almost have to go for it in that situation. Not the worst thing in the world. Turnover on downs as the Braves defense will take the field as West Virginia State has three minutes and 14 seconds to go. They can't take the lead on this position. It's, two, it's a two-score game, and they have the ball on their own 38-yard line. Braves showing pressure. Handoff goes up the middle, bouncing it off to the right side and taken down at the 40-yard line. Ball comes out, but they will say he was down. Kelvin Barrett got crushed on a big hit by one of the Braves linebackers. That was Carlos Manning who came in and laid the lumber. And clock continues to run. Under three minutes to play. Braves up 28-13 over the Yellow Jackets. Not sure how much longer they can try to run the ball here, but they do have all three timeouts, so kind of a three-minute drill in this case. Dropping back to pass, setting up a screen, left side complete to the 40, 45, still on his feet, and near the first down marker, I think they will give first down yardage on the catch for the Yellow Jackets. It was a good job by Akil Washington, I believe. No, check that. It was Trevond Reese who made the catch, playing out of the slot that time for the Yellow Jackets. Made a cut to the inside, and he's a big guy, but also very athletic. Six foot 220. Might be an inch or two taller than that. The clock stops as they move the chains. It's rolling once again, 230. Play action. Pass tipped up in the air and falls incomplete. Great coverage there. Coming in to knock it down, number 32, Brandon Watson making the play. Brandon Watson had a big game last week against Catawba. He'd been pretty quiet the entire season until then and comes up with a big play there, getting his hands up and swatting that one down. Only 5'9", but, boy, he had a pretty good vertical that time. Yeah, it looked like a basketball player out there ready to throw down. Two receivers to the left, two to the right as the clock stopped for West Virginia State. Just their second incompletion, it feels like. Handoff goes up the middle and wrapped up and able to break it barely as... Barrett as he falls forward into Braves territory, pick up of about two yards, brings up third and long, clock continues to run, two minutes and 13 seconds to play in half number one. Braves, if they get the stop, still have all three timeouts, they can try to add to what's already a 15-point lead. Remember, UNCP will get the ball to start the second half. Shotgun formation for Kinnick. Two receivers to the left, two to the right, and a running back to his left. Braves show pressure, they back off it. Play clock at 16, still plenty of time as the game clock under two minutes. From the right hash, on the 49-yard line on the Braves' side, they need to get it to the Braves' 41. Third and eight for West Virginia State. Dropping back to pass. Braves rush five. Stepping up in the pocket. Throwing over the middle. Hit as he throws. Caught. And inside the 20, taken down to the 19-yard line. What an effort as he just found space where no Braves defenders were near him. Evan Pittman making his first catch of the afternoon. That was just a dying duck that Kinnick floated up there. And he's lucky that Pittman was the one who was able to get to the spot first and make that catch. Gain of 30 on the play for the Yellow Jackets. First and 10 in the red zone. 94 seconds to go in half number one as West Virginia State will huddle up. They bring on a couple substitutions here. They still have all three timeouts. They want to try to not allow the Braves any time in case UNCP gets the ball back. Moving some guys around. Shotgun formation. 
Running backs on either side of the quarterback, Kinnick. And they will fake the handoff, throwing, and it's tipped, nearly intercepted. Getting his hands on it was Elijah Williams, then going to the turf to try to make the interception off the tip was Jonas Johnson. And he is frustrated with himself. He thinks he should have had it, but that would have been an insane interception. Yeah, well, Elijah Williams just stuck his left hand out and batted that ball right back to Johnson, and it hit him right in the bread basket before it fell down to the turf. And he knows that if he was ready for that one, he would have picked it off, but he just wasn't expecting that ball to go right there. Looks like we got a flag on the play, or I don't know whether that just fell out of the pants of one of the referees, but it is. An ineligible receiver downfield against West Virginia State. I think after that ball was tipped, they, uh, you know, somebody, one of the linemen maybe got too far afield or they were trying to set up a screen and somebody took a, a bad uh, route to it. So a five-yard penalty, first and 15. Should, I think it should be second and 15. They haven't changed the marker. Minute 13 to go. Ball on the right hash. West Virginia State trailing by 15 points. Ball on the Braves, 24. One receiver to the right, one to the left. A tight end motions from left to right. Two running backs in the backfield. And the handoff goes up the middle. Barrett breaks one tackle, stays on his feet, down across the 20, back to the original line of scrimmage at the 19-yard line. Gain of five on the run. That should bring up second down and 10, it looks like now, as they didn't change the marker, but they also hadn't changed the scoreboard that then reflected it back to reflect a first and 15. So no loss of downs on the ineligible man. Good point. So 15-point uh, difference, first and or second and 10. Clock continues to run under 45 seconds now. Ball on the Braves' 19-yard line, and West Virginia State's going to take this perilously close to the end of the quarter. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Play action, rolling the pocket to the left. He's chased down, staying on his feet is Kinnick. He's tucked, he's running for his life. He's running to the right side, and he is taken down from behind for the sack. Sacked by the Braves' defense. That's number 56, Ayers Brooks making the tackle. The clock will stop as West Virginia State calls timeout. Kinnick was just, he was, that was straight survival mode. Yeah, Ayers Brooks was the one who got him down, but really you could credit the entire defensive line for that sack. There were about three or four different guys who had a chance to bring down Kinnick, who to his credit made a good job to get away from a couple of potential sacks, but there was no way he was getting out of that one unscathed, and it was Brooks who chased him down from behind to bring up a big third and 15. Third and 15 from the Braves' 24-yard line. Real interesting question here is if they don't get the first down, do you go for it or do you just take the three points? Remember, it's a 15-point game right now, so a, a field goal makes it a 12-point game. It's still the first half, so whether or not you're thinking about how many possessions you're down, uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I would tend towards taking the sure points. Uh, it started out as a very high-scoring uh, high shootout of a game, but since then, both defenses have started to figure things out a little bit, get things together. The Code Black needs to make the stop, first of all. They, they need to force West Virginia State to make that decision. Line to gain is about the 10-yard line, just uh, perhaps an inch or two inside the 10-yard line. Third and 15 with 26 seconds left. West Virginia State comes out in a shotgun. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Running back in the backfield with Matt Kinnick, the quarterback. Braves have a couple extra speedy players on the field. They're in a nickel or a dime package. Clock stopped following the West Virginia State timeout. Dropping back to pass is Kinnick. Braves bring just four. Stepping up, throwing over the middle. Intercepted once again by the Braves and taking it back the other way. Still on his feet, trying to get down. And Elijah Williams stepped in and made the interception. Just a great job on the interception that time, stepping right in the middle of the passing lane and picking that one off for Matt Kinnick, who was not a player who throws a lot of interceptions, just six on the season against 16 touchdowns coming into this game. That's his second of the day as Albert Wright was able to come in and swoop that one out of the air. It was actually Albert Wright. You're right. Uh, Williams is 52, Albert Wright 51, and sometimes these jerseys can get bunched up. So a little bit tricky, but... Albert Wright making the interception, ending the West Virginia State threat. The Braves have the ball on their own 29-yard line. 14 seconds left. They do have all three timeouts. Play clock was starting to get a little low. Patrick O'Brien calls timeout, and he will walk over to the sideline. And I'm, I'm surprised the Braves aren't just going to be in a victory formation right now, take a knee, go to halftime. But they do have all three timeouts to work with. They burn one of them here to talk it over. Uh, again, second interception of the game. Matt Kinnick came into t today's game with 16 touchdowns versus six interceptions. He's thrown two of them this afternoon. Yeah, certainly. And, and a lot of that you can credit the Braves' defense for putting themselves in the position to make those interceptions. The first one was really not a great throw by Kinnick, but that last one was not a bad 
throw, but just a really good play made by Albert Wright, getting the start this week in the place uh, of the injured Chris Phipps at the outside linebacker position and really making his presence felt on defense, both in the running game and right there with the interception. And a great job by the front four by the Braves, able to get pressure and force Kinnick to maybe throw a split second before he mm -hmm. actually wanted to. And that was just a four-man rush yep. on that play. Third and 15, the Braves able to get good pressure on the quarterback Kinnick with just four rushers. So and really, huge. Really, without a doubt, this is the best the Braves defense has looked since the Shaw game. Yeah, very early in the season when the Braves uh, started very well. And since then, it's been two straight losses for the Braves since the Tuskegee victory. Braves coming out trying to score once again. 14 seconds left, ball in their own 29. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. And they will just hand off. Stanley with some room to work as he's taken down at the 35. He was tripped up from behind, gained six yards. Six, five, four seconds left. And I think that will do it. Braves offense starting to walk towards the locker room. They lined up like they were thinking about throwing a Hail Mary. And instead just handed off and almost broke it. Stanley tripped up from behind. And that is how the first half will end. Joe, it didn't look good for the Braves at first. They were down 13-7, to blocked an extra point, and suddenly reeled off 21 unanswered points. Yeah, just a, a good first half of football played by the Braves to come back after that slow start and just really put the pedal to the metal and take a commanding 28-13 to lead going into the half. Got to be satisfied if you're Shane Richardson. And Braves will get the ball to start the second half. I should say they have the option to receive the second half kickoff, technically. They, they will get the ball to start the second half. You, you never turn down that option. That's silly. 20 minutes on the halftime game clock. Braves up 28-13. to 13. We'll be back in a few minutes for the UNCP Braves halftime report. Don't go anywhere. This is Braves football.
Broke. This is the UNCP Braves Halftime Report with Joe Vasile. I'm Cameron Songer. Thank you for joining us. Braves holding a 28-13 to 13 lead over the visiting West Virginia State Yellow Jackets after 30 minutes of play. Joe, what jumps out to you right away from this first half? Well, the biggest thing was the play of Patrick O'Brien. 10 of 11 for 138 yards. The two long touchdown passes as well in that first half. Not only that through the air, but on the ground as well. O'Brien has used his legs smartly. Four rushes for 21 yards on this game when he hasn't had somebody open downfield and sometimes on some designed option plays. He's been able to tuck it away and run and pick up positive yardage. That's something that jumps out. Also, Rontonio Stanley and Cliff Jones both doing a good job on the ground. Really, the Braves on offense just doing whatever they want to do against this Yellow Jacket defense. They just have no answer. And it also helps that the Braves have been able to bring in quarterback Andrew Goodman to uh, design runs for him for a total of 14 yards in his first career touchdown mm -hmm. with the UNCP Braves. A nice job by them to, you know, as though they weren't having enough success with the regular offense, that, that wrinkle that really uh, opponents haven't seen a lot of on film for the Braves, it, it got the job done. Yeah, it certainly did get, give a good credit towards Goodman for that and also a congratulations and a pat on the back for that first career touchdown. I'm sure he'll be celebrating well tonight. The punter, Darius Williams, had only one chance to go, but he unleashed a pretty good one in that as well, which helped to flip field position a little bit and resulted in a West Virginia State score after that. But since then, Code Black has been excellent as well, coming up with two interceptions in that first half, one by Jonas Johnson, one by Albert Wright, and Johnson nearly had a second as well, one that hit him right in the midsection, but he off, just off wasn't ready off for it. Exactly, yeah. that he wasn't ready for off a tip. And... He still was a, a little frustrated with himself uh, for not being able to come down with. So it's just been a good job on defense of being able to control the high throttle offense of the Yellow Jackets and then offensively just essentially picking them apart and doing whatever they want. Yeah, and recapping the scoring in this game, West Virginia State, they, had, they led 7-0, they led 13-7, then that extra point was blocked. The, the opening possession was a Kelvett Barrett one-yard touchdown run. John Rich responded right away for the Braves, a 54-yard touchdown pass from Patrick O'Brien. Then a 54-yard touchdown pass by the, the visiting Yellow Jackets, Josh Keiko from Matt Kinnick. Then that big blocked extra point to keep the score 13-7. B.J. Bunn hauled in a ridiculous 40-yard touchdown catch to give the Braves the lead. That was the last score of the first quarter. And the second quarter, much less scoring, just two touchdowns, both of them by the Braves. Andrew Goodman with a short run, Antonio Stanley with a short run. That's how we got to where we are, 28-13 right now. As we take a look at the total offense for both teams, uh, the Braves, 13 first downs compared to just nine for West Virginia State. And the Braves, 252 yards of offense, 211 for West Virginia State, but they haven't really been able to finish some drives, two interceptions. Yeah, that, that's been their problem. They've been able to pick up the yards, but they haven't been able to finish. Yeah, I, I think you said it perfectly right there with the interceptions and, and a couple of drives just stalling out and some strange territory. They've punted three times as well. It's been something where, where they go back into the locker room. They go, well, the process is there. The results just aren't. It's a bad throw or a great play that's being made. But at the same time, you look up at the scoreboard and you find yourself down 15 points because you can't come up with a stop or get some good bounces your way when you're on defense. Yeah, the Braves, have, like you said, only punted once. They also had one possession end with a turnover on downs for West Virginia State. The three punts and the two interceptions really killing a couple drives. Uh, the Braves two for two in the red zone. West Virginia State one for two. So both teams have gotten to the red zone twice, and both teams have also had, uh, uh, you know, basically matched each other in, in terms of long passes, both with 54-yard uh, touchdown passes in the first quarter. So uh, it started very even. Things, I think, starting to click a little bit more for the Braves. In terms of looking at West Virginia State's key players, Matt Kinnick, the quarterback, 12 of 17, 161 yards, a touchdown and two interceptions. He's also been sacked twice, including the 10th career sack by Mike Keck. The, the problem for West Virginia State is, is on the ground. They really haven't been able to pick up too much and get too much going consistently. Just 50 yards on the ground compared to 114 for the black and gold. Yeah, and, and a couple of other things that really leap out off of this stat page is the discrepancies in the penalties. Three penalties for 25 yards on the West Virginia State side of things. The Braves have not committed one penalty yet and also sacks. Patrick O'Brien has not been sacked yet in this game. Couple of sacks 
for the Braves defense as well. They've been doing an excellent job on that side of the ball, coming down, applying pressure on Kinnick, and just throwing him off, really, especially in that second quarter. All right, well, we're going to take a break here on the Braves' halftime report. Stick with us. We've still got 10 more minutes until the second half kickoff. Braves will be getting the ball to start that second half. When we come back, we're going to take you around the Peach Belt Conference. A couple of other UNCP teams in action today. We'll also look at top 25 college football scores in Division One. But why would you want to follow that? This is UNCP. This is as good as it gets in Division Two. Some awesome action out there on the field at Lumbee Guarantee Bank Field. Don't go anywhere. This is the UNCP Braves' halftime report. <coughs> What's up? Yeah, I'm going to need to go too soon. Mm -mm. No, no, I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, um,
to the UNCP Braves halftime report. Four minutes to go until the start of the second half, so we'll get you some quick scores from around the Peach Belt Conference, starting with UNCP Braves action. We have a final score in women's soccer as the Lady Braves fall on the road to the conference leading, RD Conference champion clinched Columbus State Cougars, four to nothing. That game is a final. In women's volleyball action, we mentioned the Braves on the road taking on non-conference foe Claflin. Final score there, three to one. And a handful of other women's sports action uh, still underway around the Peach Belt Conference. Women's soccer, uh, Georgia College taking down Flagler, one to nothing in overtime. North Georgia beating Aiken, one to nothing. And Young Harris taking down Montevallo, two to one. Lander Armstrong set for a 3.30 p.m. start. And a handful of men's soccer matches also yet to get underway in volleyball action. Montevallo up two sets to none over USC Aiken and a couple of other matches still yet to start around the Peach Belt Conference. Looking at top 25 scores in Division I college football, again, most games haven't started yet. Ole Miss, number 19, trailing unranked Auburn on the road, or leading unranked Auburn on the road, excuse me, 27-19, with the Auburn Tigers having the ball on their own 33 with eight seconds left. They need a miracle to pull that one off. And number 24, UCLA, leading Colorado 7 to nothing. A bunch of other top 25 games highlighted by number 9 Notre Dame at number 21 Temple. That's where college game day was mm -hmm. this morning. A nice show from Philadelphia. And uh, a couple of games that have, one game that's already gone final in the top 25, number 17 Florida State 45, Syracuse 21, and two top 25 games from Thursday night with TCU downing West Virginia 40 to 10, and number 23 Pitt falling at home to North Carolina 26-19. Still a couple minutes to go here before the start of the second half. Braves will get the ball to start the second half. Step aside once again on the Braves Radio Network, and we'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to UNCP Braves Football. of North Carolina, Joe Basile, alongside Cameron Songer this afternoon as we're joined by the Braves marching band serenading us in a chorus of Thriller on Halloween afternoon in Southeast North Carolina. 28-13 to 13 is the score in favor of the Braves. Remember, they get the ball to start this second half. Each team still finishing up their warm-ups. The ball getting ready to be spotted as Cameron Songer joins us once again as we are just about set, like I was saying, to start this second half. Looking for more of the same, a lot of offense out of both sides. Yeah, I mean, you wonder if the Braves perhaps think about changing the strategy a little bit, uh, depending on if they can just keep the offense rolling and the defense continues to do its job. You know, maybe you look to, to grind a little bit more of the clock. The Braves actually lost the time of possession battle in half number one, 16 minutes to 14, although with a 15-point lead, I think, I think you, can, mm -hmm. you, you, you can give or take a minute there on the time of possession. Uh, as Code Black still looks really fresh, especially down the home stretch of that uh, first half, getting a, an interception to end a, a, a promising looking drive for West Virginia State to end the first half. And that, that showed that even though Code Black defensively was out there for more uh, of the first half than their counterparts, they still got the job done. Yeah, and it's another one of those things where it's not like necessarily the Braves are going out there throwing three passes and turning the ball over. They've had a couple of big plays that has resulted in them well, not holding the ball for too long, but also 20 rushes for 114 yards. They are committing to running the ball, and they've had great success with it, but it's those two big passes from O'Brien that have 
accounted for two very large scores in this game. They've also been set up in good field position in Yellow Jackets territory to start a couple of drives in this game, which is accounted for that as well. Yeah, the Braves, uh, the 54-yard touchdown pass and a 40-yard touchdown pass. It's nice to be getting almost 100 yards over just two passes. Opening kick of the second half taken by Span from about the five-yard line. Spin tries to spin past one, can't do it. He's taken down the 17-yard line. Not great starting field position here for the Braves, but the offense will get back to work, yeah, and so we'll, will we. Exactly, and we'll see if they can now here use this first drive of the third quarter to eat up a significant portion of the clock. You've got a big enough lead where it's not like you're feeling a necessarily a, an urge to quickly score on this drive you can afford to just methodically drive it down the field and try to expand the lead here and eat up as much of the play clock as possible O'Brien in a pistol formation he's got a tight end to his left one receiver to the left now Morrow the tight end motions from left to right handoff goes up the middle Stanley jukes past one and he is taken down hard right at about the 20 yard line not much there maybe a yard or two So the first play of the second half goes for a two-yard gain. Rontonio Stanley from the Braves 18 to the Braves 20-yard line. Second and eight as the Braves with the ball and a 15-point lead, 28-13. Joe Vasil, Cameron Songer here with you on the Braves radio network as the Braves playing their second-to-last home game of the season. A gorgeous afternoon, partly cloudy, 70 degrees in Pembroke, late afternoon, before, right before daylight savings time ends. Sweep play on the left side for Span. That's technically a pass as the ball went about two or three inches forward out of the hands of O'Brien. Gain of two or three for JoJo Span. Not a lot of room to work there. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of a, a pass in name only there for all intents and purposes. That was just a jet sweep to Span. Easiest catch, though, he's going to have probably in his college career. Yeah, they, we often see that with Huffman, uh, but we really haven't seen Teron Huffman much uh, in the last couple games for the Braves. Is that he's usually the guy as the receiver on that jet sweep. Two receivers on each side for O'Brien. Shotgun formation, running back to his right. Dropping back to pass. Yellow Jackets bring pressure. Floating one complete to the right side to Stanley. He breaks one tackle, and he's down to the 30-yard line. First down, Braves. They needed six. They got eight. And a good display of patience that time by Patrick O'Brien to allow the pressure to come in to, sled up the, to set up that little slip screen for Rontonio Stanley to result in the first down. Braves get the ball up to their own 30. Ball on the right hash. And the first minute and a half off the clock in the second half. Braves up 28-13, and they have the ball. Handoff, left tackle for Stanley. He tries to s cut it outside, and he has room. 35-40, and he's taken down hard, but he has enough for the first down, and he will be helped right back up. Good sportsmanship there by linebacker Jordan Pierce after he absolutely whacked Antonio Stanley. But it's a first down run, 11 yards. Yeah, pick up, like you said, of 11 yards for Stanley. They're now approaching 60 yards on the game. Might have just gone over it on that run. He's done a very solid job in coming back after a rough week last week against Catawba to have another very good game here today against West Virginia State. Stanley will head to the sidelines. Cliff Jones will come in and take over running back duties for the time being. Two receivers to the right, one to the left and tight end in the formation. Zellius Morrow on the left side. Running back Jones on the right. Shotgun pass, left side looking and threw it behind the intended target. He couldn't complete with the pass with Morrow. Fall, pass falls harmlessly to the turf. As a couple Yellow Jackets thought they were going to have a shot at it off the tip, but it never materialized. Yeah, Zellius Morrow that time was just running a little out route from the tight end position. Ball was thrown behind him, so he had to reverse his body, try and get his hands on that one, was unable to. O'Brien, I'm sure, was rather tried to lead him a little bit and get that one out in front of him so he could make that catch and turn it upfield. Morrow now heads to the sideline. Braves go four wide receivers. They still leave the running back Cliff Jones out there to the left side of Patrick O'Brien. Brian. Clock, clock stops, 12.46 to go in the third quarter. Braves up by 15. Motion man across the middle, and O'Brien will just keep. He's got room along the left side, and across the 50, stepping out of bounds, first down run for Patrick O'Brien. They motion to wide receiver. He play action to the running back, and then all the receivers or all the blockers went to the right, and O'Brien went left. Kind of a naked boot look. Yeah, and a good block down the field by the wide receiver, B.J. Bunn on the safety, Will Merritt, who was the one who escorted O'Brien out of bounds to end that play. More like he just kind of side-shuffled out of bounds. It was a very polite, oh, why don't you go out here? Kind of showing off his dance move a little bit. Yes. A little bit of a moonwalk out of bounds there by O'Brien. Back into the game comes the fullback, Martin Munn. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Setting up a screen right side for Bunn. Complete, juking back, now down to the 45 and leaping out of bounds to the 42-yard line. 
well into West Virginia State territory. Not enough for a first down, but makes it second and manageable now for the Braves. Again, back to old reliable, that bubble screen for the Braves offense today and relying on B.J. Bunn to make that double move, get back to the outside and pick up some positive yardage. It's the first catch of the second half for B.J. Bunn after he had a stellar first half, five catches, 67 yards, and a touchdown. Now we'll see if they keep going to him and he can get up over the century mark for the second game in a row. Last week, a school record 219 receiving yards on 12 catches and two touchdowns. One receiver to the right, a tight end on the right, and two receivers to the left. They fake the handoff, roll the pocket to the right. O'Brien steps up and throws deep over the middle. He has Bun. Can he make the catch? Caught. Touchdown, Braves. What a connection there. And the Braves score to open the third quarter. B.J. Bun in the end zone once again. I really can't say enough about the way that Patrick O'Brien has played these last two weeks. These are throws that he was not making at the beginning of the season. O'Brien... He was underthrowing those balls deep down the sideline. That time he spun and off his back foot fired a strike inside the five-yard line to B.J. Bunn, who was hit perfectly in stride. Just he has come leaps and bounds since the beginning of this season. Bunn stays on the field. He will hold for the extra point attempt. It's up in. It's straight through by Matt Davis. And with 11.42 remaining in the third quarter, Braves really opening this up now. Four unanswered touchdowns for the black and gold. They have a 35-13 lead. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to UNCP Braves football. my sp All right, right back to action we go. Matt Davis, after nailing his fifth straight extra point, he's been a perfect five for five today. He'll stay on and kick off for UNCP. And Braves defense will be on the field for the first time in the second half. And West Virginia State, they scored on their first two possessions. Since then, they have been shut out. A great job by the Braves defensively. And uh, second half defense has actually been the strength of the Braves at home. Mm, they really allow very few second half points. Uh, they're, they're a really good team, and a lot of credit goes to the coaching staff. Uh, Joe Ford, the co-defensive coordinator, Shane Richardson, the head coach, uh, making those halftime adjustments. We saw it especially against Winston-Salem State in the opener, and it's just carried straight on since then. Yeah, I mean, you look at the points by quarter this year coming into this game for the Braves defense. In the first half, they're allowing over 130 points in the second half. They've allowed just 50 points this year. And through the first three games, it was something like they allowed one touchdown in the second mm -hmm. half. Kickoff caught inside the five-yard line and taken out. And about the 20, just running laterally, and now having some room to the left side across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Finally taken down is Joe Morris. Flag comes in late, and there's some pushing and shoving going on. That's number 31, Stanley, who has to go in and restrain his teammate. So maybe he's the one being restrained. Looks like the football might have popped out late and Stanley got on it. And the flags are flying in. A lot of confusion at the end of that one. We'll see I if the officials sort this one out. They're going to talk it over first. I don't think there was any fumble. I, I think that he was down before the ball came out. So I don't think that's what the issue is. Mike Keck is right next to the officials. He could say this is just where he's going to line up. But he's a captain. He can talk to the officials during the game. Trying to plead his case, I think this is probably going to go against UNCP. Otherwise, Keck wouldn't be so urgently pleading. 11.29 to go in the third quarter. Braves with the 35-13 lead. This is the opening possession of the second half for West Virginia State. And here's the call from the official. It's a dead ball foul, personal foul, against the Braves. Just what we feared. And there's a second foul that will go against West Virginia State, also a personal foul, and so those fouls offset. A, a break there for both teams, I suppose. It's ultimately, you throw that flag and you call it just a warning. Yeah, uh, that's one of those ones where it's, it's a dumb play on both sides, and you're lucky if you're the Braves that it didn't come back to bite you. Braves have that nice, comfortable lead right now and don't want to do anything to shoot themselves in the foot. Up 35-13 with the Yellow Jackets getting their opening possession of the third quarter. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Kinnick drops back to pass. Four-man rush. Fires over the middle, and it's dropped. In and out of the hands 
of Travon Reese. And that just hit him right on the fingers. Yeah, it couldn't have thrown a better pass if you're Kinnick that time. Hit Reese perfectly, and he just flat out dropped that one. I don't know if you heard the footsteps of Albert Wright coming in behind him to lay a lick on him if he was able to make that catch. But if you're Reese, you, you got to secure that ball. Uh, that uh, You could say it hit him in a bad spot. Uh, as instead of second and manageable, it's second and 10. Clock stops 11.25 to go third quarter. They will hand off up the middle, trying to bounce it off on a counter, and not much there. Deonta Brown as the ball maybe popping loose at the end. Braves actually just running some substitutes on pretty quickly. And this is third and long for West Virginia State. Not how you want to start the third quarter after you had a whole halftime to diagnose what was going wrong with your offense late in the first half. Those struggles have just continued in half number two. Yeah, and not only that, but now the game's starting to get a little bit chippy as some more pushing and shoving at the end of that game. Braves really starting to get physical on defense, and that's something, again, that's not good if you're a Yellow Jack. And this play clock getting down to 12, and the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets finally calling timeout. I think they didn't have the right personnel on the field. Timeout on the field. We will just keep it here during this timeout as the teams talk it over. It's hard to imagine there's a lot of animosity between these two teams. You're talking about a team in West Virginia. It's a long way away, Institute West Virginia, and these two schools have never played each other in college football. Yeah, and so obviously there's going to be a lot of, well, obviously a lack of familiarity between the two teams having never played, but it's one of those things where now you're looking at a long bus ride back to Virginia right in the face if you can't come back and make this win a game again. Third and 10, dropping back to pass, setting up a screen, left side complete to the running back. He's got blockers in front of him, 35, 40. He's just short of the 40, but enough for the first down. And a great play call there as they got it to Deonta Brown. He was able to take it himself past the marker. It's good to see Brown back in the game. He, he was the guy who carried the ball for almost the entire opening drive, and then Kelvin Barrett came in to score the touchdown. We didn't see Brown again. I was starting to think, well, maybe he'd been hurt or something, but... Clearly not. It was just part of the game plan. Now back in here on this first drive of the third quarter. So they respot the ball, move it back an inch or two. It's still a first down for West Virginia State. Shotgun formation as Kinnick has a running back to his right. Three receivers to the right. No tight ends. He will hand off. Left tackle for Brown, and he is gobbled up in the backfield by the entire front seven by the Braves. They all swarmed to the ball, got off the blocks very nicely. Yeah, it looked like Aris Brooks might have been the first one to get there, the defensive end. He had the sack earlier in that first half and then coming up with a big tackle right there on the first down rush. So the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets out of Institute West Virginia, we didn't get to talk about this at all in the first half, enrollment of about 3,000 and a fun fact about their football team, 11 different players came into this game with a touchdown catch this season. So they do like to throw the ball around. They like to spread it around as well. Shotgun formation, two receivers on each side. Delayed pass and it's dropped. A big hit there as Tyreek Holloway laid out the intended receiver, number 87, Brady Cox, who had to go up high, left the body exposed. And boy, he's going to feel that in the morning. Yeah, dangerous pass by Kinnick. He left Cox in a bad position where he had to turn around and go up for that one as he was running up the seam to try and catch that one. And he got obliterated the second he got his hands on that ball, and it ended up dropping. Third and 10, clock stop, 9.43 to go in the third quarter. Braves up 35-13. Braves bringing pressure. They throw to the running back in the left fat flat complete. And he is well short of the marker. He needs to get to about the 48. He got the 46, maybe the 47, depending on where they mark it. But clearly, not the first down. Yeah, it's going to be a fourth and two. They're going to bring out the punting unit here for real this time. Although we'll see if they we'll fake see. it. They faked it one time from right around this part in the field today. And we'll see if they want to try something here with well, the lead starting to get away from them. I, I think you do. I think this is the Braves definitely have to be aware of a fake here because... Frankly, West Virginia State can't stop the Braves' offense today, and it's already a 22-point difference. It's a low snap, a one-hopper to the punter. He finally gets it off. It's a high kick off to the left side. Bunn waves off his team. It will bounce and trickle out of bounds. It takes a slight West Virginia bounce and trickles out at the 24-yard line. Braves will take over from their own tw actually 23-yard line, but Code Black again, another defensive stop. And since the opening two drives for West Virginia State, it's been goose eggs for the Yellow Jackets. And th that's exactly what we saw for the first three games of the season. They'd allow a touchdown in the first drive of the game or so, and then they would shut the opponents down for the rest of the game, especially against Winston-Salem State. They took the opening kickoff, then drove down the field, scored a touchdown, went up 7-0, and I don't even think they got in the red zone after that. 
Opening drive for West Virginia State, nine plays, 72 yards in almost four minutes. Second possession was two plays, 66 yards, capped by a 54-yard touchdown. And again, since then, all punts and two interceptions by West Virginia State. Patrick O'Brien back out there leading the Braves' offense. They motion span. They fake to him. Hand off up the middle to Stanley, and he falls forward and gets one yard, if that. As there was a good surge defensively by Devon Bollinger, the defensive tackle for the Yellow Jackets. Just right there in the middle, coming up in support, was number 43. That's Tyreek Etheridge. And the 35 points that the Braves have up on the scoreboard right now, the most they've scored in a game this season. And there's still 840 left in this third quarter. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Again, Span motioning across. They will pitch it to him on the sweep. Blockers in front of him along the left sideline. And he gets down near the marker. This will bring up a third and short for UNCP. And the thing that Span did there that I really like was quite physically guided his lead blocker, Rontonio Stanley. He had his right arm out on Stanley's back and almost pushed him into one of the Yellow Jackets defenders to have him throw a block and pick up a couple extra yards, just a little bit shy of a first. Well, Stanley's not the biggest back, 5'8", 175, so lead blocking is probably not something he, that comes naturally to him. So a nice job. Technically, that's a, that's a pass. Again, that, that sweep that gets pushed forward a couple inches by O'Brien. Now West Virginia State creeping up to the line. They're showing blitz. Braves have a jumbo package with fullback Dylan Davis lining up as a tight end. Pistol formation. Handoff up the middle and taken down in the backfield is Rontonio Stanley. He's still fighting, trying to stay up, but he is well short. Lost a yard or two on third and one, and the Braves go three and out on this possession. Though the offense is the offense now, now going to come off the field. To come off the field. I think they were, waiting, they were waiting just to help Stanley up because he, uh, he was just tangled up with a couple defensive players there. And uh, fortunately for the Braves, the play clock uh, also slow to get started. So it doesn't cost them there as they don't have to really hurry up on this punt as both teams really took a while to get off the field and get their uh, special teams out there. On to punt for the Braves. Darius Williams to Yellow Jackets back to return. Play clock now down to five. It's a good snap. Williams steps into a good punt and he unleashes a deep one. But caught, uh, it's dropped at the 26 yard line. Picked back up by West Virginia State. Now taken across the 30, short of the 35. And this time, it stays in the hands of Joe Morris as he's able to hang on. Yeah, Morris nearly muffed that one. It was almost a very dangerous play, but was able to recover quickly and then get it across the 30. But a good punt that time for Williams, who has been very sparingly used today because the Braves' offense has just been going so well. Yeah, one turnover on downs. That's just the second punt for UNCP. Otherwise, everything's all ended in touchdowns for the Braves' offense. And the one possession that ended in with the end of uh, first half. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. 6.56 to go in the third quarter for Kinnick. He's in the shotgun, running back to his right, and a tight end on the right side of the formation as well. Start to wonder how much do they need to abandon the run going down the home stretch. They're down 35-13, ball on their own 33 as they take over following the Braves' punt. Play action. Time for Kinnick. He will tuck and run, and he's still up. Takes up about three or four yards before sliding down before Elijah Williams can really get his hands on him. Yeah, and, and I get why you would want to run the ball a little bit if you're the Yellow Jackets. You've seen Kinnick throw a couple of interceptions today and a couple where he's left his receivers out to dry, but at this point, the passing game's been your bread and butter all year. you, you got to just go with what you, you know works. Same formation, a tight end to the right, a running back to the right, two receivers to the left, and one receiver alone. At the top of your screen, if you're watching on the YouTube broadcast, 6.18 to go in the third quarter. Second and five from their own 38, right hash for West Virginia State. Kinnick in the shotgun. Play clock down to two. He gets the snap off. Drops back to pass. Throws right side. Complete. And getting back to the original line. No, back uh, first down yardage. A little turned around there. That's a first down catch by the running back who snuck out of the backfield. So that will move the chains. For West Virginia State, they pick up a first down finally. Seems like they'd really struggled to do that, especially in the second quarter after they moved the ball so well in the first 15 minutes. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Shotgun formation once again for quarterback Matt Kinnick. Four linemen for the Braves. They're in their base 4-3 defense. Play clock running. It's down to 6-5. Will they get the snap off? They will. Four-man rush, rolling the pocket to the right. Now he's flushed out. Tucking and running and picking up a yard or two, stepping out of bounds is Matt Kinnick. And a smart play by the Braves to not 
try the big hit there. Matt Thomas quickie. You know he thought about it, but he also knew that's probably a 15 yard penalty, and that would not make Shane Richardson a happy man. No, and Shane Richardson, not a guy that you want to get on his bad side. You don't want to get on the bad side of any football coach, quite frankly, but certainly not uh, because of a, a bad hit out of bounds in a game that you're up by this much. 35 13 is the Braves' lead. 5 30 to go in quarter number three. West Virginia State driving. They have the ball on their own 45. A little bit of trouble with the snap. Dropping back to pass. No, it's a delayed run. And it's a short gain, if anything, for Kelvett Barrett. He got a yard. Now the Braves can bring on a, a specialty package for pass coverage. Mike Keck comes on. He has fresh legs. He'll try to rush the passer and pick up his 11th sack of the season. Yeah, the NASCAR package in here. Four defensive ends all down, including Tajai Lyles coming into this game as well as Tim Applewhite. Third and eight from their own 46 for the Yellow Jackets. Under five minutes to play in quarter number three. Dropping back to pass is Kinnick, setting up a screen to the running back Barrett along the left side. It's complete, and he lost a yard or two. Great job by the Braves to get out on that. And they didn't bring a lot of pressure, just a four-man rush. It means they dropped people back into a zone, and they read that all the way. Yeah, Carlos Manning came up from the outside linebacker position to make the tackle that time. It's a good job by Manning, and Manning's had himself a nice game. He had seven tackles week one against Winston-Salem State, just three tackles since then until this game where we've called his name several times. And Manning, a redshirt freshman from High Point, North Carolina, a guy who played three sports in high school, basketball, football, and track. So he's capable of playing you know, multiple positions out there as well. Bunn calls for a fair catch inside his own 20, backs up to about the 16-yard line, and he makes that catch. Braves will start, uh, but they have a ways to go. 4.05 to go, third quarter as the offense hustles right back out onto the field. A low-scoring third quarter, and means we haven't had much of a break here in the broadcast booth, Joe. No, we certainly haven't, but I think, well, you're definitely handi handling it fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it was such a high-scoring first quarter, it was already 14-13 after one. The Braves scored the only two touchdowns of the second quarter. And since then, we've seen just one score in the first 11 minutes of the third quarter. Braves trying to punch it in once again and really break this thing open. It's a 22-point lead already for the black and gold. Patrick O'Brien in a pistol formation. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Fakes the handoff, has time, throws a deep ball over the middle. He has Bunn caught at the 50, 45, 40, 30. It's a foot race, 20, 15, 10. B.J. Bunn will walk in for his third touchdown of the game. 83 yards for B.J. Bunn. Wow. When it rains, it pours, Joe. B.J. Bunn had a great game last week. 12 catches, 219 yards, and two touchdowns. The, the 12 catches and 219 yards broke school records, and he wants to rewrite the record book once again. Unbelievable. Eight catches for 198 yards and three touchdowns today for B.J. Bunn. Well, I'll tell you what, as B.J. Bunn uh, goes on to hold for this extra point, we vote for Athlete of the Week at UNC Pembroke. He won it last week, and he is making a case to win it once again as the extra point is good by Davis. 3.54 remaining in the third quarter. Braves starting to run away with this one. 42-13 is their lead. We'll be back in 30 seconds on the Braves Radio Network. Goodness gracious. Joe, you were doing the math just a moment ago as we are back here on the Braves Radio Network. B.J. Bunn, with not the impressive record-breaking performance last week, and he's followed up with another really good game so far today. Th those numbers are just, they're jaw-dropping. Yeah, in the last two weeks, B.J. Bunn, 20 catches, 411 yards, and five touchdowns in the last seven quarters. And there's still four minutes left in this one. Well, depending on how well West Virginia State can do things on offense, we might not even get to see B.J. Bunn in the fourth quarter of this game, uh, which is really a shame because O'Brien and Bunn just have uh, the connection going right now, and B.J. Bunn is making some great moves. A a you know, at, at a certain point, you West Virginia State knows the deep ball is coming. They're prepared for it. I it's been beating them all day, and they still couldn't stop it there. 
the Braves just know when to when to go to that and when not to because they're basically hitting 100% on those long balls. Kickoff by Davis. It'll be fielded at the goal line by West Virginia State, taken from about a yard deep in the end zone along the right sideline to the 25, hurdling a man and getting out at the 30-yard line. That was a nifty little move there by Morris, and he got way up in the air on that hurdle move. Yeah, Joe Morris has been doing a pretty nice job in the return game for West Virginia State. It's mostly just been that nobody's done much of anything since the first quarter after his returns in terms of their offense that's been holding them back today, 42-13. to 13 And, well, for the Braves, it's been 35 unanswered points since there were eight minutes left in the first quarter. And you know what started it was the blocked extra point. Mm -hmm. Little special teams plays can sometimes go a long way. Of course, that, you know, that understates the adjustments that were made by the Braves' defense, but sometimes it's just a little spark. Big formation as the handoff goes up the middle, and a lot of room there for Brown. He gets enough for the first down, short of the 40-yard line there. They brought in a couple extra tight ends, and I think the Braves still in their base defense, not able to bring him down. Yeah, the extra blocking definitely served Brown well. He's been doing well when they've had that two tight end set in. Had a couple of nice runs on that first drive, and now seeing more action here in the third quarter, picking up the first down there. So we expected West Virginia State to come out and really have success throwing the ball. The Braves have really shut that down. West Virginia State forced to go to their run game, which has been okay at times, but now facing the big deficit, 29 points. That you've got to think they're going to start going to the air a little bit more. Play fake, throw, left wing, real wheel route, incomplete over the head of the tight end, Brady Cox this time. Checks out, it's Tyler Carrillo, the other tight end. Brings up second and 10 as the clock stops with 3.09 to play in the third quarter. Carrillo, one of a whole swarm of Yellow Jackets from California. They've got more California players, it seems, than they have West Virginia players on the team. Yeah, a bunch of guys from Ohio, some, some guys from Illinois, Maryland. Uh, Kentucky well-represented, a handful of guys from the D.C., Virginia area, and California, kind of uh, out of what you'd expect there from West Virginia State, but there you have it. High snap, it's corralled in the shotgun formation, handoff up the middle, not a lot of room there for Barrett. He gets back to the line, picks up a yard or two, keeps his feet churning, and brings up a third and long. On comes, that, like you said, that NASCAR package for the Braves defensively. They have four defensive ends coming on, including Mike Keck off the sidelines. Seems like he's kind of taking a back seat here in this second half, they're keeping him off the field because you don't want to have him injured, especially not for the last couple games of his career. Get him on, though, in the pass rushing situation such as this one. Third and eight from their own 40, 236 to go for West Virginia State. This is kind of a must-pick-up kind of situation, or else they'd have to punt once again and give the ball to an explosive Braves offense. Shotgun snap, four-man rush, stepping up in the pocket, and he is sacked. Uh, basically, everybody on the Braves defensive line beat their man off the snap, and Marquin Hill making the sack. He takes down Kinnick and for a loss of three yards. Braves will get an opportunity to get the ball back once again. And third sack of the game for the Braves defense. That time, though, Keck came on and dropped back in a coverage, almost as a decoy, and it was Marquin Hill, the defensive tackle, who was able to get down and bring Kinnick down. On to punt once again, Cole Patterson. Averaging 34 yards per punt coming into today's game. There's another good one along the left side. Bunn calling for a fair catch, and then we'll back off of it. It takes a West Virginia State roll inside the 25 to the 24-yard line after it landed down to about the 30-yard line. But the Braves, they force uh, the punt by West Virginia State. Offense comes back out onto the field, and the UNCP offense has been just money in this game today. Yeah, and we were talking about on the halftime show about how in the first half, they got pretty much whatever they wanted against the Yellow Jackets defense. That hasn't necessarily been the case in the second half, but a couple of big plays from O'Brien to Bunn, who are both out there now. And it's been 14 to nothing in this third quarter in favor of the Braves. O'Brien in the pistol formation, a running back behind him, two receivers to the left. Handoff off left tackle. This is DeMonte Rem, and he lowers the shoulder, gets a yard or two. A big, powerful run there by DeMonte Rem. First carry of the game for him. Check it, that's Brian Staten, the tailback. First carry of the game for him either way. Neither of those guys had carries yet. And what was kind of a running back by committee earlier in the season, four guys, it's been just two for the most part for the Braves this season. 
Quick throw, right side, complete to Huffman on the screen, trying to set it up. Jonathan Huff out there um, trying to throw a block. Can't get much there. Gain of four yards. Brings up third and short, third and medium for the Braves. We'll call it maybe third and four. Yeah, third and four. Yeah, certainly nothing that's unmanageable for this offense, especially not the way that they've been moving the ball today. But you would like to see him pick up this first down here and just to be able to sustain a drive and just eat up as much of this clock as possible. Being up by 36 points, you don't need to put points up on the board, or 29 points, you don't need to put points up on the board, but just to eat up some time. O'Brien with five wide receivers, throws right side on the comeback route, complete gain of 10, first down. Easy money there to Aaron Clay, his first catch of the afternoon. He was practically unguarded all the way on the right side, right along the sideline. It was a good job by Clay. We haven't called his name all day, and he was right there when Patrick O'Brien needed him to be open. He was able to get the separation, pick up the first. 15 seconds left in the third quarter. Braves don't need to run a play, but they hustle up to the line like they're going to. 10, shotgun formation, empty backfield for O'Brien. Five wide receivers, dropping back to pass, has time, throws over the middle, complete, and dropped quickly is John Allen right near midfield, just a couple inches short of the 50-yard line, and that is the final play of the third quarter. Braves will have second and short when we come back. More importantly, however, they're up 42-13. 35 unanswered points for the Braves since the midway point of the first quarter, and the teams will switch sides. Braves just looking to run out the clock the rest of the way to keep everyone healthy, get out of here with a win. We'll be right back. You're listening to UNCP Braves Football. Braves have the ball in the big lead. Patrick O'Brien has his offense on the field. Two receivers to his left, one to the right. Fullback on the right side with the tailback behind O'Brien. As the Braves now going from right to left down the field. Pump fake. He has time. Steps up in the pocket. Looking deep down the right sideline. Throws, and it's intercepted. A leaping interception by Steven Gomez. And that's the first pick of the day by O'Brien. Really the first bad throw he's had all day, Joe. But that could give the Yellow Jackets a little bit of a moment momentum. They are down by 29 points, and... And there's really no time like the present if they're going to try a comeback. Yeah, he just underthrew that one, and a good interception that time that was made by Gomez. And, well, if West Virginia State has a chance at a comeback, like you said, it's got right here and right now. Otherwise, this one is just not going to be enough time. Braves outgaining the Yellow Jackets. 200 yards. It's 449 to 253 in that category. Two interceptions thrown by Yellow Jacket QB Matt Kinnick compared to just one by O'Brien. Braves have 19 first downs to the Yellow Jackets 12, and it's been long passes from O'Brien to B.J. Bunn. Handoff off right tackle, trying to stretch it out to the corner is Barrett, and he's not really able to turn the corner there. Gets five, maybe six yards on the run. And again, West Virginia State keeping with the run. Again, they're down by a lot of points in this game, Joe, but... Uh, I would say stubbornly sticking with the run, but when you're picking up five or six yards, I suppose you stick with what works. I don't know. Yeah, and really what is a telling number in that third quarter? The Braves outgained the Yellow Jackets 197 to 42. That's not very good if you're the visiting team. You not if you've got 42. Not That's not what you want to be doing. Not, not when you're down at halftime getting outgained by 150 plus yards. Dropping back to pass now is Kinnick. He has time. Fires over the left side. Incomplete over the arms of Albert Wright, who was going for his second pick of the afternoon. 
nearly got his fingers on it, enough to distract the receiver, and it falls to the turf, bringing up third and four. And maybe that's why they haven't been passing, because, well, Kinnick's had a couple intercepted and nearly had one taken away right there by Albert Wright, who has just been playing very well on the outside today. Both he and Carlos Manning, not guys who have started a whole lot this season, but making a measurable impact in this game, being thrust into more prominent roles because of the injury to Chris Phipps last week at Catawba. Uh, must convert third and four ball in their own 21-yard line for West Virginia State. Fullback in front of the quarterback, Kinnick, in a pistol formation. Handoff up the middle, dancing past the line, spinning through a tackle, and enough for a first down. Kelvett Barrett to the, about the 27-yard line. He needed the 25. That's a first down for West Virginia State. They needed it, and they got it. Hard nose running by Barrett that time, just lowered his shoulder, used the spin move as well to pick up that first down. West Virginia State now 4 of 13 on third down conversions on the season. Code Black allowing opponents to convert about 39% of third downs. But last week, Catawba, 8 of 13 on third downs. That was one of the problems for the Braves. They couldn't just get off the field. Fullback motions to the left side. Everybody on the left side of this formation. Pocket rolls to the left. Kinnick throws on the run, caught at the 40-yard line. And Joe Morris gang tackled by a bunch of Braves, gain of about three or four. So Joe Morris has kind of been the feature receiver here today with the uh, non-action of Quinton Gray, the leading receiver for West Virginia State, a guy who's averaging almost 120 yards per game through the air, not playing a third straight game. That's been a problem for West Virginia State. And uh, their passing game, I think, has suffered for it. Two receivers to the right, one or none to the left, a tight end on the left side, fullback and a running back in this formation, Kinnick. Hands off up the middle, and Barrett jukes to the outside. He's got some room to work, 40, stiff arm, and tumbles down to the 44. He just sent Kelvin Brim to the turf with that stiff arm. A nice, powerful run, more than enough for a first down. Clock stops as the chains move, 12.52 to go in this game. First and 10, still in their own territory, West Virginia State, and trailing 42 to 13. Yeah, that one looked like a run out of the old Madden games, just a little right trigger, left trigger that time on the juke and then the stiff arm by Barrett to pick up the first. Ball in their own 44 for the Yellow Jackets. Braves lining up right along the line of scrimmage. They have six guys there, and they will bring pressure. Play action, rolling to the left. He's flushed. He needs to tuck it, and he is sacked. Kinnick is taken down hard by Tim Applewhite coming in and making the sack. Apple White, another one of those guys that just comes on in some pass rushing situations to give a little bit of a different look to the offensive line. Sky had a couple of sacks this season, a big one right there. Loss of five on the play. Check that loss of eight on the play. Second and 18 coming up, all on their own, 36. And this is putting them way behind the chains. Three receivers to the right, one to the left for Matt Kinnick and a tailback on his left side. Play clock at, tw at 10, he gets the snap. Braves bringing more pressure, stepping up in the pocket, firing over the middle, complete to about the 44-yard line. That gets the ball back to the original line of scrimmage and nothing else. Third and 10 now coming up for the Yellow Jackets. And again, it just feels like they have to convert this if they have any hope of coming back in this game. Albert Wright with his team-leading seventh tackle on that play right there. Just a, a good job by Wright to contain that one and not allow any yards after the catch. Same formation for the Yellow Jackets as the receiver on the left side. Top of your screen if you're watching on the stream. Moves in a little bit towards the line of scrimmage. Three receivers on the right, running back. Braves bring four. Pass along the left sideline, leaping and incomplete. Attempt for an interception there as Rod Butts landed a little awkwardly there. I think he got a little shove from the wide receiver. And he is down on the turf. Trainers coming right out to have a look at him. It was an incomplete pass. Brings up fourth and 11 for the Yellow Jackets. But more importantly, an injury to a Braves player. Rod Butts leapt up for the interception. Pass was intended for number 10, Joe Morris. We will step aside while the injured player gets attended to back in 30 seconds on the Braves Radio Network.
13 with 11.16 to go in this game with Joe Vasile. I'm Cameron Songer. Cornerback for the Braves, Rod Butts still down on the turf. It's uh, eerie silence right now at Grace P. Johnson Stadium. Lumbee Guarantee Bank Field, Teams on, or players on both sidelines on one knee as the injured player still getting a look from the training staff. Rod Butts, a redshirt senior from Dry Branch, Georgia, came into today's game with seven tackles. Comes in, uh, he's kind of a, a nickelback. Uh, an extra defensive back, not in the starting lineup, listed as the guy behind Mike Lawrence on the Braves two deep, but a, a key player for Code Black and has has done really well in this game as part of just uh, the whole unit for the Braves that's been so key in keeping West Virginia State scoreless now for the better part of this game. You know, starting to lose count, and I'm not great at math, but since about eight minutes into this game, and there's now 11 minutes left in the game, West Virginia State has not put a point on this board. Yeah, and Butts now being helped off the field by a couple of his teammates, not really putting any pressure on his legs, just coming across as, like I said, he, he went up trying to make an interception, might have gotten a little shove from behind. That's just stuff that happens in the course of the game. It's, you know, nothing malicious or anything. It's not the fault of any player in particular, just came down, landed awkwardly, and went right down. Sometimes those non-contact injuries, those non-collision injuries can be uh, the most devastating. I mean, wish, wishing the best uh, for Rod Butts, and hopefully he will be okay and we'll be able to see him uh, again this season. Two games left on the schedule for the Braves. They'll be on the road next week at Kentucky Wesleyan. And before they come home for the season finale, Senior Day on November 14th, that is the final home game for the Braves. High snap, and the punt gets off by Patterson. It's high up in the air and fairly short. Braves just waving off that one just sails right out of bounds at the 28-yard line as both teams kind of looking to their sidelines before making their way over. I think they were looking for a flag, perhaps, and never materialized. Well, just not a very good punt that time by Patterson, who does not have the strongest of legs, averages about 34 yards a punt this season, has not ever had a very good game kicking the ball away. Uh, the, the one thing I think that was in the scouting report for him was to avoid uh, allowing the Braves to have big returns, and that's certainly been the case. He's kicked it uh, in situations where he's kicked it high enough where it's either been fair caught or just allowed to bounce. As the Braves back out on offense, shotgun for, or pistol formation for O'Brien, a fullback and a running back in the formation. B.J. Bunn alone on the right side, two receivers to the left. O'Brien waiting for the snap. He gets it and hands off up the middle. Stanley lowers the shoulder, picks up four or five yards. Falls forward, a nice run there. Braves will take that all day. Second and medium coming up for UNCP. They just try to burn some more of this clock. Ball on their own 37-yard line. And they will give him seven yards on that run. And something that I'm seeing right now down on the sideline over by the trainer's table, it's, it's really nice to see a lot of the defensive players have come over and checked up on Rod Butts now that they're all back on the sideline. Demonte Rem in a tailback. They will throw left side complete to Span as he drags the defender with him. Picks up the first down across the 45 to about the 46-yard line. Braves get another first down. They have been racking those up today. Their 20th of the afternoon. That's, that's a lot of first downs, especially with over 10 minutes left to go in this game. They'll keep one in the clock. 10-20 left to play. Braves out with the big lead. 42-13 is the score with Joe Vasile. I'm Cameron Songer. Thank you for joining us on the Braves radio network. Uh, pistol formation for O'Brien. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, and they will just hand off right tackle to Rem. He lowers the shoulder once again. Demonte Rem, 5'11", 210 pounds. A wrecking ball with Adidas cleats on. Yeah, he had over 2,300 yards his senior year last year at East Wake High School. He's carried that here to UNCP. He's seen... A little bit of action kind of on and off, but now getting back in here in the fourth quarter, this blowout. 9.39 to play now as the Braves approach midfield. Ball on their own 48 after a four-yard run by Rem. Shotgun formation now. Two receivers stacked up along the left side. O'Brien dropping back to pass. He has time. Fires over the middle, and it's a one-hopper to Span. They will say, yeah. He, I mean, Span tried to sell it like he caught it. That clearly bounced. So it's an incomplete pass. Yeah, it was a good try by Span to convince the officials, but uh, when the ball bounces about a yard and a half in front of you, you're not going to be tricking too many people. 
he made a clean catch on it, and he, yeah. he, he held the ball up like, look, I caught it, but it, it bounced in front of him. Well, yeah, he, he caught it on a bounce. It, it, he, he did display nice hands. Well, he certainly did. Third and six for the Braves. The clock stopped, 9.27 to play in this one. Braves up big, 42-13, ball on their own, 48. Shotgun formation, O'Brien, two receivers to the left, one to the right. West Virginia State shows blitz, then they pull back. O'Brien chased out of the pocket, rolling to the right, throws, and along the right sideline, incomplete flag comes in, and that's going to be, it looks like an ineligible receiver downfield as one of the offensive linemen wandered too far up the field. Uh, yeah, you could certainly say there was an ineligible receiver downfield. The... Uh, left guard Jared Johnson was just looking at where the flag was thrown and where he was standing 10 yards in front of the line of scrimmage when that pass was thrown. Yeah, and he was and he was ineligible. So I, he must have thought that it was a run play. I don't know how you are that far down the field. He's getting excited, looking for somebody to block. That is the ineligible receiver downfield, and I believe the penalty will be declined as the pass ended up being incomplete anyway. Brings up fourth down for the Braves, and the offense trots over to the sideline. I think this will be the punting unit. No reason for it not to be the punting unit. Have an opportunity to pin the Yellow Jackets deep, force them to run some of this clock. The sun ducking behind some clouds is still just an, a really gorgeous afternoon here in Pembroke. Uh, as the last day of October, Halloween, Plenty of fans in costumes, really enjoying the day. 72 degrees right now in Pembroke, North Carolina. Two guys back to return for West Virginia State as the clock has stopped. I was hoping what, uh, UNCP was going to run the ball a little bit more on that drive, but alas, high punch there by Williams, and it is fair caught at the 16-yard line by a Yellow Jackets return man. That's number 12, Tim Kennedy. And that will give the Yellow Jackets possession right back. 9-10 to go in this ball game. They need yards, they need points, and they need it soon. Very, very soon. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. And as the quarterback, Matt Kinnick, comes out one more time, got a running back to his left as the Braves, shuffling some players around defensively. They still have most of their starters out there in a 29-point game. Under 10 minutes to go, 9-10 to play. Braves looking for another big stop, dropping back to pass. Kinnick throws over the middle, incomplete. Led his man too much. A couple Braves were there as it falls to the turf. Kinnick just has seemed a little bit out of sorts in his second half. Just not very sharp with his passes. Hasn't thrown an interception like he did in the first half, but just not putting the ball where it needs to be. No huddle as there is a flag along the line. Free play for the Yellow Jackets. Pass goes incomplete. Great coverage there along the right sidelines by Mike Lawrence. But that will probably be a false or a uh, against the Braves, I think. Otherwise, they would have blown it dead. So, yeah, it looked like Austin Locklear might have jumped a little bit early. Was caught a little surprised by how quick that snap was, and was unable to get back on the right side of the line of scrimmage. You don't usually see teams go no no huddle following an incomplete pass. There's no reason to hurry up to the line following uh, you know a stoppage in the clock. You can take your time. You know, perhaps try a different personnel set, a huddle up, and, t and talk about the play a little bit. But that time it worked for the Yellow Jackets. They get five free yards. Incomplete pass means the clock stopped on the free play. Encroachment on the Braves. So second and five coming up. 8.58 to play in the ball game. Yellow Jackets down 42-13 to against the Braves. Dropping back to pass is Kinnick once again. He has time. Throws over the middle. Has a man caught at the 45 and taken down at the 47-yard line. A leaping grab by Akeel Washington. Matt Thomas Quick was running with him, but just a perfectly placed ball. Kill Washington's been pretty quiet today. He's the second leading receiver on the team behind Quinton Gray, who obviously is not playing. He's the leading receiver who's in there. Surprised to not see him more. Handoff, right tackle, and a huge hit. Wow. The forward progress just stopped quickly there by Deonta Brown. And he got just clobbered by one of the Braves linebackers. Yeah, it was Brandon Watson who just acted like a 5'8 brick wall that Brown just ran right into and was dropped down on his back almost immediately. Very powerful tackle by Watson. Shotgun formation as the clock runs. Ball on the right hash on the Braves' 47-yard line. 8.13 to go. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Faking the handoff. Dropping back to pass Kinnick. Has time. Throws over the middle. And the pass dropped. A lot of contact there 
but it was after the ball had arrived. Great coverage once again by the Braves defensive back. Yeah, it was Jared Johnson that time, uh, rather Jonas Johnson, I should say, who w was back there. He's got the interception earlier today, and that's him making a good play, just dropping back in deep coverage to poke that ball free before it was able to be caught. Uh, would have been a very spectacular catch there by Tyrell Henderson, deep over the middle, about 30 yards downfield. Clock stop once again, 8.05 to go, third and six. The play clock at 13. Yellow Jackets now looking to the sideline. Kinnick in the shotgun, one receiver and a tight end to the right. And two receivers to the left, a running back to his left as well. Play clock down to four. Gets the snap off. Handoff up the middle. Brown has a little bit of room. Is he able to get the first down? He's close. I think they will give it to him. I don't know. Looks like the linesman might be marking him at the 42-yard line, and they need to get just inside the 41 for the first. He might be a little short here. Yeah, official saying fourth down, and there's an injured Yellow Jackets player on the field. Looks like one of the linemen has the... West Virginia State training staff comes out to take a look at him. Braves head over to the sidelines. 7.48 to go. We'll keep it here as the injured players attended to. 42-13, to Braves lead. As we sort of recap this game action for you, West Virginia State took their opening possession down the field, scored in four minutes. The Braves responded right away with a 54-yard pass to John Rich. Two plays later, Josh Keiko of the Yellow Jackets hauled in his own 54-yard pass. Braves blocked the ensuing extra point, and since then, the Braves have just been reeling off the points. Yeah, it's been just a, a day where the Braves' offense has been in perfect uh, synergy with each other. I don't even know if that's a phrase that I just coined right there, but I uh, Let's roll we'll with go it. with it. Uh, they've only punted the ball twice. They turned it over on downs once. Other than that, into the end zone on every single drive today. Just perfect uh, sync. Synchronicity. I think I just yep. made up a word. And, uh, I'm pretty sure that that's time. a word, too. Yeah. I, you know. I, th I, th I know it's a police album. I know that much better <laughs> than that. I have no idea if it's an actual word. They, they've been good. Let, let, let's say that. They've looked good, and they've scored lots of points. That's, that's a much simpler way of doing it. And those were all words and phrases. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth and one, officially, as the injured man walks off the field. It's number 57, Zach Alvarez. Out of Lakewood, California, the left guard, six foot one, three hundred pound senior, wrapping up his collegiate career at West Virginia State. And they will look to his backup. The guy behind him on the depth chart, depth chart is Jeff Gardner, a sophomore from Grays Lake, Illinois, showing off the geographic diversity of the West Virginia State football team. And that really speaks to some pretty good recruiting efforts out of state by this coaching staff that they're able to get all these guys from outside their home turf. Play clock and game clock both running once again. Braves showing blitz. Fourth and one. The offense is on the field. Dropping back to pass is Kinnick. Under pressure. Throws over the middle. It is caught and taken to the turf. And what a catch there by Akeel Washington. Flag on the play, and I believe it's because the DB hit him a little bit early. He still was able to hang on. Probably pass interference. Assuming West Virginia State will decline it. First down grab either way. Well, they haven't moved the chains quite yet. Unless it's on the offense. It, it, it could be on the wide receiver, but uh, he looked like he was definitely dealing with the brunt of the contact there. Not really any kind of indication yet as to who the penalty will be against. West Virginia State hasn't moved up to where the ball was spotted. Pass interference, and it is against the defense. So uh, sometimes looks can be deceiving, Joe. Not this time. Uh, that, that looked like pass interference. Uh, you know, I would say it kind of smelled like pass interference, but we're, we're kind of far away. It's, it's hard to smell uh, what's happening on the field. We're in an enclosed press box. Yeah, I was going to say, there's too much garlic going on right over to our right from the, uh, mm -hmm. from the pizza the at halftime. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't have time to get a breath mint or anything. First and 10 for the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. They trail 42-13. Ball on the Braves' 29-yard line following the fourth down conversion. 7.20 to play. They need 29 points in seven and a half minutes. And for an offense that hasn't scored since the halfway point of the first quarter, I'm not confident they can do it, but let's see what Matt Kin Kinnick can engineer. A tight end, a fullback, and a running back in the formation. Just two wide receivers, one on each side. Play fake. Lobs one over the middle. Caught inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Another nice catch by Akeel Washington as he came over the middle. It's just that same route as that last play, a little skinny post over the middle, and Washington's been getting the inside of the field and been able to just get enough separation with the cornerback covering him to make the big catch for the first down. Seven minutes to play now, first and goal from the six. And this is kind of uncharted territory here for West Virginia State. I feel like they haven't had a, a, a goal-to-go situation since their opening drive. 
And now, here we go again. Fourth quarter, down by 29 points. Kinnick in a big formation. Handoff goes up the middle to Brown. He is pushed back as he runs right into the rear ends of his offensive lineman. They weren't able to get any surge. No gain on the play. Like Ed Hopper was at the bottom of that pile, bringing him down. Got a good push up front. Ed Hopper, more of a run-stopping specialist on the defensive line. They'll say he lost a yard. Second and goal coming up from the five now. Let's see if West Virginia State goes to the air. They have just one passing touchdown compared to two interceptions by Matt Kinnick, who's also been sacked three times in this game. And time continues to be the enemy here for West Virginia State, and they're really in no hurry. Play clock down to eight when they break the huddle. Game clock now at six minutes and two seconds. Two receivers to the right, play clock down to one, and they have to burn a timeout. They were able to run one play there in the inside the 10-yard line. They let the play clock run on the first one, and then taking a long time, finally calling the timeout here. We will take it as well. Back in 30 seconds on the Braves Radio Network. Braves up 42-13. Five minutes and 58 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. West Virginia State down 42-13. They haven't scored since the midway point of the first quarter. Braves have 35 unanswered, but that streak is in jeopardy here. Second and goal from the five-yard line for the Yellow Jackets. Braves still have most of their starters in defensively. Kinnick in a pistol formation. And now he motions uh, some guys around to make it a shotgun formation. And he will roll the pocket to the right. Designed run. He throws to the right side. Throws. Touchdown. Yellow Jackets. And they tack one on. Akeel Washington keeps his foot feet in along the sidelines and hauls in the touchdown grab. 5.53 to play in the game. 42-19 Braves lead. And Akeel Washington who was the go-to receiver on that drive for Matt Kinnick coming through with the touchdown reception there. As the Braves completely shifting personnel here. I, I think the Yellow Jackets going for two. Doing the math, it, it's a 29-point game. They figure they have to go for two at some point, so why not now? Uh, if why they not if now? They, if they go for two enough, I think they can make it so that they can ultimately kick a field goal rather than a touchdown and get a tie or something like that. There, there's, there's a chart. Someone did some math, and, 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 I, and I trust them for it. Perhaps just trying to make this look a little bit better. 42-19, they're going for two. They hand off up the middle, and Brown is close to the goal line. He's in. Two-point conversion is good. And with 5.53 to play in the ball game, the Braves now just up by 21 points. It's 42-21. I expect to see an onside kick here coming up for West Virginia State, but we will step aside for 30 seconds. You're listening to the Braves Radio Network. We'll be right back. Five fifty-three to play in this one. The Braves' 35-point consecutive streak has, has been broken. It's a 21-point lead for the Braves. West Virginia State finally able to punch one in there on the short pass by Kinnick to Akeel Washington. And, uh, Joe, we're trying to figure it out. I'm assuming they're probably going to try an onside kick here because if they kick deep, they might not see the ball again. Yeah, the hands team is coming on. Your John Rich is going to be one of the up, up men along with Mike Lawrence and looks like Jonathan Huff, a couple of wide receivers and some defensive backs up on that first line. Also and they are set. Tyreek Holloway up there as well. Yeah, it looks like they're, they are going to be set to onside kick this one. Although the Yellow Jackets would need to recover three onside kicks and score three touchdowns in five minutes and 53 seconds 
just to tie this one and have all the extra points be good. Or they could try to go for two at some point and go for a win because, you know, college football is weird. Mm -hmm. Timeout Braves here. We'll, we'll keep it here as the Braves just want to talk this over. And uh, I suppose you could call this icing the kicker. Uh, you know, an onside kick is difficult to execute because there's there's a little bit there's I shouldn't say a little bit there's a lot of luck involved. Oh, in, absolutely! In an onside kick, there's only so much you can do as a kicker to to plan for these kinds of bounces. Uh, this is a field that West Virginia State has never played on. Mm -hmm. Every every field plays a little bit differently, bounces a little bit yep. differently. Uh, the Braves themselves don't even practice on this field. They practice on the practice field uh, on the far sideline there. So. And, and that's an important thing, especially because it's a natural grass surface and not an artificial surface where at least you know there's a little more uniformity. With the natural grass surface, there's divots, there's chunks that have been taken out through the part of the game. There's little irregularities in the dirt and the way that the ball is going to bounce that you try and drive it down into the ground and pop it up like you see so many onside kicks do. Well, you just don't know how that ball is going to bounce. And looking for the lucky bounce or hope that it goes off the hand of somebody before it goes those 10 yards to be able to recover it. And there's no way to, to prepare for which way it's going to bounce. There's just so many different things that can happen on an onside kick. But the flip side of it is the re returning team some usually has to make a play. So here we go. Onside kick attempt by West Virginia State. And the man was offside. It's straight to the Braves player. It's going to the ground to make the catch. And there was a, a false start anyway, so they would have to re-kick it, but the Braves recovered it. It was number 18, John Rich, who got low, made the, made the play. And Braves will probably just decline this penalty. Yeah, and you could see that time that uh, Cole Patterson, who is the one who was lined up to kick the onside kick, he tried to drive it down but ended up hitting a ground ball right to John Rich. And then afterwards, he was just <laughs> bent over at the hip with his hands on his legs, just frustrated with himself for not being able to get away a better kick. So they're still talking about this a little bit. And uh, I think finally the Braves will be able to come out on offense here. It looks like it's going to be Goodman in at quarterback for UNCP. Andrew Goodman wearing number six has yet to attempt a pass this season, but a couple rushes in the first half. And he picked up uh, his first career touchdown in a Braves uniform. Guy who transferred in from Itawamba Community College, redshirt junior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Still has a year of eligibility left, and the Braves have been liking to use him in, in, the, in those kind of designed run packages. We'll see if West Virginia State catches on now, as this will be the third time he's been out there. First and 10, and he will hand off up the middle. As Cliff Jones keeps the pile moving forward to about the 40-yard line of West Virginia State. Braves, I'm assuming, will just keep the ball on the ground here. I don't think they plan on trying to throw this. So because, they're, because they know they're going to keep the ball on the ground, it actually makes sense to have Goodman out there as mm -hmm. he's much more of a threat to run than Patrick O'Brien. Yeah, not only that, but you don't want to have O'Brien get out there and have him take a hit if he does take off running. And, well, you don't want to pass the ball. You just want to keep it on the ground, keep the clock moving. Get O'Brien out. He doesn't need to be in at this point. Just put Goodman in and run the clock out on this one. Looks yeah. like all the backups are in now on offense, even along the offensive line. Yeah, Ashton Gaines, number 85, a wide receiver, lined up along the left flank. An option keeper here for Goodman as he will run near the first down marker across the 35 to about the 34-yard line. Still appears to be about a yard short. This will be third and very manageable here for the Braves. And meanwhile, just wasting away a lot of the play clock, a lot of the game clock. Now less than five minutes remain in this game. The 21-point lead, more than comfortable. Quite frankly, I could envision a scenario where the Braves just keep it on the ground. If they can keep picking up first downs, this one could effectively be over. Yeah, the Braves with a, a lot of backups out there right now. 13 on the play clock, 432 to play. Braves with a three-touchdown lead. They have wide receiver Connor Preston out wide to the right. Third and two from the West Virginia State 35. Option keeper once again kept by Goodman, and he has enough for the first down. He falls forward to about the 31-yard line. Some pushing and shoving going on along the edges. As tumbling to the turf was Aaron Clay. I think he was trying to sell the fact that there was some contact, and officials not buying it. First down, Braves. Clock will run once again. 4-12, and the Braves can keep this under four minutes before they have to run a play. Goodman looks over to the sidelines as the Braves 
finding something here in, in the later stages with Goodman as a runner and what, what they can do with this kind of package. It'll be interesting to see if this is something that carries over into the next game for the Braves. Play clock down to six, 350 on the game clock. Braves on the West Virginia State 31 yard line. Handoff up the middle. Not a lot of room there as Goodman tried to sell that like he was going to pass. I'm pretty sure West Virginia State uh, knew that that was going to be a run. They, they keyed in on the, on the back there. And a small game there for number 23, Brian Staten. And officials giving him just a yard to the West Virginia State 30 yard line. 340 to play. And the clock has stopped, 341 to go, as West Virginia State burning a timeout here. I, I suppose they're, you know, talking about how they're going to strip this ball and then go the length of the field and then do an onside kick, and this time we'll be successful, and then suddenly we'll have a game again. But, uh, Joe, it's a little curious at this point. Yeah, at this point, it, I get the want to try and stop the clock and give yourself as much time as possible to come up with a stop on this set of downs and then get the ball back and try – to mount a unlikeliest of unlikely comebacks. A miraculous comeback. Let's call it what it is. I, when they get the ball back, uh, barring a turnover, there will be less than three minutes left in this game if the Braves manage the clock with any kind of competence. Th that's not enough time to score three touchdowns unless you have three miracle plays and recover all these onside kicks. It's just... The odds are so gigantic. In, in theory, it, it's what you're supposed to do. The other team is trying to run out the clock on you. You're trailing. You have timeouts to burn in the last five minutes. You, you, you use them so that you can force the other team to make run more plays and potentially turn it over. Uh, but w will it actually result in, in anything for West Virginia State? Probably not, other than just prolonging this game. QB draw for Goodman. He's taken down just at the line of scrimmage, and once again, West Virginia State will call timeout. Just uh, four seconds run off there, and this will for force a, a third down coming up for the Braves, third and nine. And we'll see if the Braves will substitute or they'll let Andrew Goodman fire his first pass of the season. So basically what we were saying before that play was there's a chance. There's a ch So you're saying there's a chance? Yeah, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying there's a chance, but uh, it's... Slim to none, and Slim's heading to the exits. Yeah, yeah. West Virginia State heading to their sidelines. Fans sticking around, though. Not many fans heading to the exits. As I, you know, just soaking up the last of a, a gorgeous afternoon in Pembroke. Getting ready for Halloween night. It should be a fun one. As the Braves getting ready to celebrate a big victory. And one that would snap a two-game losing streak. As... They will get ready to hit the road next weekend to take on Kentucky Wesleyan. That one will be available right here on the Braves radio network on the radio broadcast. And then before they come home for the season finale and the home finale against Limestone. And then barring something strange happening, that will probably be the finale for the Braves. They most likely won't be in the playoffs, but you never know. This, is, this has been an impressive win against a team with a winning record, and he, those never hurt. Goodman with two receiver or two receivers to the left, one to the right, a running back on either side of him. It's a triple option pitch to the left side and tripped up short of the 25-yard line. Kind of an awkward-looking tackle there, but being taken down is DeMonte Rem, short of the line to gain. And I'm not sure West Virginia State's going to call their last timeout. Or they're actually out of timeout, so they can't stop the clock anymore. So we'll see if the Braves opt to just go for it here on fourth down and you're not going to kick a long field goal. It's too short to punt. Might as well just go for a keep on the ground. See if you can break a tackle. Exactly. Get, get inside the, the line to gain and then mm -hmm. basically kneel out the rest of this clock. Yeah, not only that, but even if they don't get there, just it's almost better yards-wise to do that than to try a field goal because if you miss, then West Virginia State's, you know, 10 yards closer than they would be even if you just get back to the line. The play clock was running down to zero, so the Braves took a timeout. They ran the play clock all the way down to zero. 2.50 to go in the game. Matt Davis warming up his leg as though he's going to kick. B.J. Bunn over next to Davis. Is, I think they might be thinking about trying a field goal here because, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're going to keep uh, Davis loose. And, hey, you know, what were we talking about before the game? We were talking about the over-under, how many points there would be in this game. We said about 60, and right now it's 42-21. Uh, you know, the pace of the scoring definitely has slowed down since that wacky first quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 63, so if you hit the over, 
congratulations to you. I, I don't think we took any bets, so it doesn't matter. But this will be about a 45-yard field goal here for Matt Davis. It would be a season long for him. He kicked the long field goals last year and almost exclusively kicked the long field goals. But this year has been a little bit off on the longer field goals. Missed a 44-yarder wide right last week. Had plenty of leg on it, though. That was his first field goal miss of the season. And now Davis trying from 45. B.J. Bunt on to hold. Ball on the left hash. 250. Snap is down. The kick is up. And it is good. Matt Davis with a season-long 45-yard field goal. And with 2 minutes and 44 seconds to play in the ball game, UNCP adds to their lead. It's 45-21. We'll take a break and be right back in 30 seconds. You're listening to UNCP Braves football. Talking about math a little bit, we, we struggle with it up here in the broadcast booth at times, but we'll tell you this, that field goal by Matt Davis makes it a four-possession game. 45-21, a 24-point difference. And that's huge. No, actually, wait a minute, Joe. It's a three-possession three game. game, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you did say that we're bad with math. Uh, we weren't lying. We weren't lying. Let's let's put. It's they can go it's for two all three times and, and, and get and it. And tie it. Yeah, that would be highly improbable. Let's 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 say that it's probably a four possession game. But like we said much earlier, it's probably over. It, it's it's really uh, with with West Virginia State out of timeouts, two forty four to go. Matt Davis kicking off for the Braves as the sun sets or gets ready to set. Kind of ducking behind some clouds here. It's kind of dark on the, in the stadium. The lights not on. But some dark clouds starting to roll in. Some rain in the forecast for tomorrow and Monday in the area. And lucky that we're able to get this one in the books. Matt Davis with a short kind of a pooch kick as it drops at the 20-yard line. The Yellow Jackets struggle to get someone to it. They finally get it in just a three-yard return there, pushed out about the 24-yard line. That was one of those I got it, no, you got it, no, I got it kind of kickoffs. Yeah, just a, a short design pooch kick. That time by Davis right in a no man's land and nobody seemed to want to put their name on that ball and scoop it up. But luckily they were able to get somebody on that ball so it didn't end up going for a turnover. Uh, you know, those, those kinds of plays, you know, these guys, I'm sure this is not the reason no one got it, but it, it kills your kick return average. It really hurts the stats there, Joe. And, uh, you know, especially for those up guys, if you have an opportunity, you want to have one that you can break for a, a big return. Shotgun formation for Kinnick. Two receivers on either side. Dropping back to pass. Braves rush four. Fires pass. Left side short complete. And a gain of about five or six before the wide receiver pushed out of bounds. The clock will stop with 2.34 to play. Looks like it'll be second down and about four coming up. As that time the defender made the tackle, just kind of saw the receiver running at him and squatted down and wait to get run over. Right out of bounds, didn't go up and try and make the play. Rather, let the play come to him. Play action, pass over the middle, complete. Not a lot there, spinning and a big collision there in the middle of the field as some defensive linemen dropped back once they saw the pass over their heads. And going over the middle, they went in and punished the wide receiver for coming over the middle. It is enough to move the chains, however, so that stops the clock with 2.15 to play as the ball gets reset. First and 10 from their own 34-yard line for West Virginia State. They're out of timeouts, they're down by 24 points, and they're firing the ball. Rolling to the right is Kinnick. He has time, throws on the run, leaping catch made at the 50-yard line. What a play by Trevon Reese. There's a flag on the play, and it's going to be a hold. This one's coming back. Khalil Vance was held that time by the running back, Kelvin Barrett. Otherwise, he would have sacked Kinnick. Yeah, you could see it was uh, definitely an awkward play as Kinnick was forced. He made a nice throw on the run, a lot of composure, but the reason he had that extra space was because of the holding, and you see the running back Barrett there pleading his case with the official, kind of demonstrating with his hands a little bit, this is what I was doing, this is what it looked like, and, and, and sorry, that's, that's not going to work. 
First it, and 20 coming up now for West Virginia State. It rarely ever does, does it? I, I don't think I've ever seen an official uh, say, oh, you know what, good point there, running back who's complaining about a blocking or a, a, a holding call. I'm going to pick up this flag because uh, because I was wrong to throw it. That's That's usually not how it happens, but... Just trying to make a point, I guess, and why not? Dropping back to pass, throwing short to the running back on the right flat, complete to the 30, still on his feet, 35, 40, 45, and he's pushed out for a gain of 20 and a first down, West Virginia State out of bounds, stopping the clock for a first down. Under two minutes to go now, minute 40, and the ball near midfield for the Yellow Jackets. Braves, I think, clearly in kind of a prevent defense here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you can do here, just drop back and just try and avoid the big play here. And Hey, if they're going to pick up 10, 15 yards every time, they're going to do it, but they're going to eat up a lot of the clock doing it. Trying to keep them in bounds over. That would be nice for the Braves. Mm -hmm. Four-man rush. They get pressure on Kinnick. He is pushed down and sacked. I'm not sure who actually made that play. So getting up to celebrate is Austin Lockley. Here's at the bottom of the pile. Basically, that sack came because the D-line pushed one of the mm -hmm. O-linemen into the quarterback with such force that he fell down. Yeah, Christopher Powlin, the offensive lineman, was the one who was matched up with Austin Locklear that time, and Locklear just came on a bull rush and pushed him right back into the quarterback. I guess Locklear gets credit for the sack there, or maybe it's yep. just a team sack. Dropping back to pass on second and 18, throw over the middle is dropped by Trevon Reese. That stops the clock with a minute and five seconds, but brings up third and 18. Ball on the West Virginia State 38-yard line. They need to get it to the Braves 44. Obviously, four down territory here for the Yellow Jackets. Obviously, if the Braves get a turnover, either on a on a on a pick or on a fumble, or ultimately on downs, they'll just kneel the rest of the clock out. West Virginia State. They need a lot of points and a lot of onside kicks very quickly. Setting up a screen, left side to the wide receiver. It's complete, staying in bounds, gaining two or three yards across the 40 to the 41. This brings up fourth and 16, and uh, this might finally be the game. And, you know, the way that West Virginia State's been running their offense right now is how they've needed to be running this offense for the entire second half. They've been just running and running and running and running the ball, and now they've essentially put themselves behind the eight ball late in the game to the point where it's just too late. Faking the handoff, dropping back to pass Kinnick. He fakes and now is running for his life. Two uh, defensive linemen chasing him. He throws to about the 50-yard line. It's complete. A nice catch by Keiko, but he's short of the first down marker. Looking for flags. There is none. He did a nice uh, play to keep his feet down in bounds to make the catch, but they just needed too many yards. Turnover on downs. 24 seconds left. Braves can just take one knee and this game will finally be over. A great effort all around for the Braves, especially the defense throughout the second half of the first quarter and on. Uh, the first two drives, very successful for West Virginia State. Two drives, two touchdowns. After that, just the one touchdown in what we can ultimately call garbage time. So the Braves can come out in a victory formation here. And it's number 16 for the Braves, Zach Wilcox. And they are not, they're not in the victory formation. They're going to run a play here. Two receivers to the right, one to the left for Wilcox, who's in a pistol. And he hands off up the middle, running across the 50, and taken down to the 48-yard line of West Virginia State is the running back, number 23, Brian Staten. And that probably will be it. 12, 10, or 11, 10 seconds left on the three-yard run. And the Braves will start shaking hands with the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets players as the clock hits zero. This one is final. The Braves with a dominating performance, 45-21 winners over the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets with the win. The Braves improve to 5-3 and three on the season. What a game. It was just perfection out of the offense, more or less, for the Braves today. They did a great job just, as we said, I feel like I've said 15 times today, they got whatever they wanted out of the Yellow Jackets defense. It was like Swiss cheese, just moving it up and down the field from the beginning of the game right through the end, and it showed up on the board as Code Black was able to come down on defense after they bent and broke a little bit early. They were able to regroup and come back, recollect themselves, and come away with a big victory. The passing game was the key for the Braves. Patrick O'Brien with four touchdowns through the air, one interception, but over 300 yards passing. B.J. Bunt broke, uh, following a record-breaking performance last week, followed up with another stellar game. Eight catches, 198 yards, and three touchdowns for B.J. Bunt. Uh, 
Uh, he probably gets my vote for player of the game and player of the week once again for the Braves. As this is a big one for the, for the black and gold team. They stay perfect on their home field. They get ready for their final road game next week against Kentucky Wesleyan. Joe, just your final thoughts from this one. Uh, it's an encouraging game for the Braves after two straight losses on the road at North Alabama. And then last week at Catawba, they needed to come back home and have a statement game. And that's exactly what they had. Next radio broadcast for the Braves will be next week, Friday, on the road men's basketball exhibition against Wake Forest. The football team in action the following day on the road against Kentucky Wesleyan. The next video broadcast for UNCP Sports is Tuesday, volleyball against Coker. That will do it for us from Grace P. Johnson Stadium. The final score here today, UNCP 45, West Virginia State 21. For my broadcast partner, Joe Vasile, and our entire broadcast crew, I'm Cameron Songer saying thanks for listening, and we'll leave you with the sounds of the game.